Words. What are words? What meaning do words have? Where do words come from? Do words have any power? No. And the word was made flesh. Yes, words have power. I love you. Powerful. It's been said that words are the architecture of the mind, and we humans are the only life form that use words to communicate. Words are important and powerful. Words assembled properly can change the way people think, the way relationships are held, how things are learned, even the way whole societies operate. Words determine the way the world works. Imagine how powerful words become when put together to create a book. Books can carry us off to faraway places, entertain our mind in wondrous ways, magically creating whole new worlds for us to discover and play in. But just who are they that write books? They're a collection of skilled, gifted individuals who possess a unique talent that separates them from all the others. Many of you have come here today in this great gathering place with books to write and ideas to share with the world. Creating a successful book, one that earns its place on bestseller lists, calls for uncommon skills. And no one is better qualified to point the way to writing success than Mark Victor Hansen. His work has made bestseller lists more than any other living person. And today, here at Megabook Marketing University, Mark has assembled a cadre of proven professionals eager to share with you their knowledge, their skills, and their insights to help you chart your own course to publishing success. And so now, please join me in a warm welcome to the Megabook Marketing University stage, Mr. Mark Victor Hansen. so thankful and touched that you're investing your time, your energy, your money, your insight, your willingness to grow and glow and change the planet. Everyone say yes. yes. And tonight's going to just launch this and put the wind beneath your wings if you're ready. Everyone touch yourself and say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I couldn't be more excited. This is the event of events as far as I'm concerned that I get to participate in and take the leadership role in. But to start tonight, I get to introduce you to a lady that I've known for 20 years. I've watched her evolve from have-ness to have-notness and back to have-ness again. I've, uh, <laughs> she sat in the audience. She is going to tell you her story. She is going to be our MC just in a minute. We have uh, gotten to share the platform around the world. She owns a company with her husband, Doug, called Mortgage Superstars, and they basically train what I'm going to teach you during this weekend, grow rich in a niche. They own a little niche, and the mortgage business is booming. How's the mortgage business, everyone? Booming. booming. And she does two retreats a year, one in Aspen, where we get to go skiing with everybody, and that's cool for people who like a winter trip. And then a week later, we go down to Puerto Vallarta, where she owns a little ranch right on the ocean, which is really cool. And we get to do a summer trip in the middle of the winter. Is that good or is that good? That is? Yes. Without further ado, would you please welcome up one of the great illumined people of our time who is just an effervescent light beam and an energizer, energizer bunny and one of the great thinkers of our time. Would you welcome Deborah Jones, please? Are you doing great? I have to tell you, I am so honored that Mark invited me to come and MC this event with you this weekend and to spend some time with you. Last year was my very first time to have an opportunity to attend one of these events. Mark had been telling me for years. He says, Deborah, you got to come to this thing. you got to come to this thing. And last year was the first time that I had the opportunity to come and sit right out there where you're sitting. And I have to tell you, I was absolutely astounded with the information that I was able to receive during that weekend. And here's what I know is going to be true for each and every one of you. Each and every one of you are going to walk out of here on Sunday evening with far more information than you ever, ever anticipated that you were going to receive as you are sitting here right now. But you know what? In order for you to be able to do 
do that, you need to understand and be very clear on the fact that this is not a passive event. This is an active event. And for you to get everything that you possibly can out of this program, it means that you have to be fully engaged. It means that you have to have an open mind. It means that you have to be ready to get everything out of this event that you possibly can. So if you're ready, let me hear you say yes. Okay, I'm going to ask you some questions. How many of you came to this event because you want to expand your mind with a bigger vision than what you had before you came in here tonight? If so, let me hear you say yes. How many of you came here because you want to expand your network of contacts so that you can move your project up to the next level? If that's true for you, let me hear you say yes. How many of you came to this event because you want to turn yourself, your mindset, the thoughts, the visions, the dreams that you have for yourself and the books that you want to publish, that you can turn yourself into a multi-million dollar bestseller and beyond? It's, it's, okay, so that everybody can join you. If that's true for you, let me hear you say yes. Okay, well, the way that this works is I want you to turn right now to the person that's sitting next to you on one side and then the other, and I want you to say, I'm so glad you're here. Why are you here? Okay, okay, I can see how this goes. If I give you guys a little bit of an opportunity to find out about each other, you'll sit here and talk all night, and I can't say as I would blame you, because as I've been sitting on the sides and I've been watching people come in, one thing that I know for certain, we have a fascinating group of people that are here that are going to spend the weekend with each of us. Now, it's a little bit difficult for me to see all the way to the back of the room with these lights, but I want to ask some questions. If you are here this evening and you have previously attended one of Mark Victor Henson's mega book events or one of his publishing events in the past, would you please stand up? If you've attended one of his events in the past, one of the mega book events or one of the publishing events in the past, or if you've benefited from it on tape, would you please stand up? Let me see where all of those people are. Okay, for the, please stay standing for just a moment. For those of you that are still seated, I want you to look around as I'm doing right now. I'm looking all the way to the back of this room, and I see that there are lots and lots of people who have invested their time, energy, their money, and their talent to come and hear one of these events again. That should tell you something. Now, for those of you that are standing, I want to ask you to do something throughout the weekend. You know, Mark is hosting the event this weekend, but he's just one person, and his staff is hosting the event, but they have a lot of things to do. So for those of you that have attended one of these events before, right here, right now, I officially make each and every one of you a host. And I would appreciate it if you would make everyone else feel welcome. Start by giving the people who are seated, and this is their very first time, give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> welcome to all of you first-timers. And those of you that are standing now, as you take your seat, let me make an announcement for you. After tonight is over with, if you will stop out at the product table, there are some stars that they would like to give you. If you would stop at the product table, those of you that have attended one of Mark's mega book events before or one of his publishing events before, please go to the product table, tell them how many years you have attended, and they are going to anoint you with stars for every year that you have attended on your badge. And as people see you walking around, you know what that's going to turn you into? It's going to turn you into one of Mark's ambassadors of possibility because people will know that you have attended this event before. They know that if they have questions, they can come up and they ask you. Tell them about my friends that are billionaires that come to my events. I will in just a minute, Mark. I will just a minute. Hold that thought. Oh, about the stars. Oh, okay, thanks. Mark asked me to tell you about the friends of mine that come to my events that get stars on their badges. We were talking about this on a previous occasion, Mark and I were, and I said, you know, people really like to be recognized for things that they have done. And I know myself, if I attend an event more than one time, everybody likes receiving some special recognition for having done that. And I told Mark over the years in the mortgage industry, I have had people who are presidents of billion-dollar-plus companies that get all bent out of shape if the right number of stars are not on their badge. Now, let's face it, people, these little stars are the little tiny things, you know, that you get at Staples. But it's an important thing. And why? Why is it important to people? It's because it means that they care enough to not settle for success. They care enough not to settle. You know, I've often heard it said that success is one of the most dangerous places that anyone can arrive at in their career. And personally, I believe that. Because when you reach that destination known as success, one of two things happens to you. You either quantum leap yourself and you move on to more extraordinary levels than your life has ever seen before. Or you get full of yourself, you get complacent, you get all into your ego. You actually start believing what's on your brochure. Anybody know? Anybody like that? 
you know, people start believing what is on their brochure, and if they're not very, very careful, success will become a distant memory for them. Well, I know that success is not going to be a distant memory for any of you that are here this evening, because I know what's in store for you for the next few days, and I'm just so excited for you. Now, I've got to ask some questions, and again, I apologize ahead of time, because I'm going to have to put my hand up like this to be able to see, but I want to ask some questions. How many of you are already published authors? If you're a published author, would you please raise your hand? Oh, my goodness, Mark, look at that. Woo, give them some applause. My heavens, that's a lot of people. Wonderful. You can put your hands down now. I applaud you. I applaud you. How many of you have written a book, but it's not yet published? In other words, you're looking for somebody to help you. Let's see those hands. Woo, let's applaud those people, too. That's wonderful. And then the third question I would like to ask, how many of you have some idea, don't raise up your hand until I tell you to do so, how many of you have some idea that's been roaming around in your head for quite some time? You know that you've got a story to tell, whether it's fiction or it's nonfiction. There's something that burns deep down inside with you that's a message that you know that you've been called upon to share with the world. But for whatever reason, you just haven't done it yet. Maybe it's just an idea that's just kicking around in your head. Maybe it's a few notes that you scribbled down on a piece of paper, but it's not a real book yet. It's not an outline. It's not a manuscript. How many of you have that that you brought with you to this event. Can I see your hands, please? Those of you that have a dream you're trying to birth. Oh, Mark, turn around. Look at these people. Look how many dreams we're going to be able to birth this weekend. It's wonderful. Give those people a round of applause, please. The reason I ask you to raise your hands and identify yourself in that way is that I have some good news for you. Whether you're a published author who has already sold hundreds of thousands or millions of books, whether you're that person that has the dream that's running deep down inside of you and you're just dying to get that message out and you're hoping and praying that by coming here you're going to learn something that's going to help you, regardless of which end of the spectrum that you're on, here's what I know to be true. You're going to find something that's going to help you at this event from now until Sunday evening. But as I said to you when I began, it means that you've got to be fully engaged. You've got to be ready to get everything that you possibly can out of this event. Mark asked me to share just a little bit with you about my story. And I'm going to begin that story by acknowledging some things that I know to be true about those of you that are sitting in the audience tonight. I know that there are some of you that are here, many of you in fact, that are in the category that we would refer to as financially wealthy. Coming here wasn't a hardship on you. It was just a decision. You just decided, and from wherever it is that you reside in the world, you had plentiful financial supply to be able to go get on a plane, come and bring whomever with you to this event that you would like to. It wasn't a problem at all. There are some of you that are in the, oh, well, it's okay category. You're not in financial struggle situation. Your life is working pretty well. You're not exactly in the wealthy category, but you didn't have to think about it way too long to make up your decision to come here and, and be a part of this this weekend. And then I also know that there are probably some of you that are sitting in this room that it was a major financial struggle for you to make the decision to be here. And in sharing my story with you this evening, I begin by sharing that story, particularly with those of you, that it was a very difficult decision for you to decide to spend the money, make the journey, and come and participate this weekend. 21 years ago, my life did not look like it looks today. In fact, 21 years ago, if someone had said to me, 21 years forward, you'll be emceeing an event for Mark Victor Hansen, who sold over 80 million dollars, 80 million books, and has traveled all over the world, and you will have shared the platform with him many times, I would have told someone that they were crazy. Because 21 years ago, I systematically went through my life and destroyed every avenue of life that one would deem to be valuable. How many of you have noticed that when life is trying to give you a message it gives you a progressive series of bad events until it captures your attention. How many of you noticed that? Can I see a show of hands, please? Okay, well, it wasn't until I had reached the destination known as the pits, where everything that I had identified myself by had been removed from me, until I had destroyed, as I said, every avenue in one's life that one would deem to be valuable, that I finally asked the question, do you suppose any of this has anything to do with me? How many of you took it a while for you to get, you know, the thought to occur to you that maybe you were a part of the problem? Well, 21 years ago, I figured out that perhaps I was a part of the problem. And having reached the destination known as the pits, I began to rebuild my life. And I used the word dream as an acronym for myself. Because at the time, 
I had no love relationship in my life because I'd long since run off anybody who tried to care anything about me. I had no job because the company I was working for before had gone into bankruptcy. I couldn't find another job. I had no means of transportation because I'd had a series of car accidents in a very short period of time. My car was now demolished. I had no way to get around. My health was rotten. I had creditors beating on my door. And I kept waking up in the middle of the night in a state of panic. Has anyone ever done that type of thing? Let me see where you are. Not a fun thing. And 21 years ago, I decided, you know, if I can destroy my life, perhaps there is the possibility that I could rebuild it as well. And 20 years ago, this man right here, Mark Victor Hansen, walked into my life. And as they say, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. You're going to hear more about my relationship with Mark and the influence that he had on my life when I bring him back up to speak to you again in a little bit. But suffice it to say for now that because of the vision that he was willing to share, because of the mentorship that was provided, and because of the student's willingness to absorb everything that was being offered, my life went from one of residing in the pits to being a life that I now lead every day, pretty much just wanting to pinch myself and saying, is this my life? Is this my life? It's been wonderful. You're in for a tremendous gift this weekend. Mark asked me to share a little bit about my story, and as I told you, I rebuilt my life around the acronym of the word DREAM, with every letter of that word standing for something. I want to talk to you about one letter right now, and that's the R in DREAM. And for me, that stood for realize what's hot and what's not about your life. In that instance, I was asking myself that question, what was hot and what was not. And as I took a look at some of the things that were hot and some of the things that were not in my life, one of the things I realized very quickly was that my power of association needed some improvement. I had heard somebody say that your income would be predicated based on an average of your six closest friends. I looked at my six closest friends and I went, yikes, i got to have some new friends. How many of you have ever had that realization occur to you? You know, you got to upgrade sometimes. And so I began visualizing for people that were more successful than myself to come into my life. And lo and behold, Mark Victor Hansen showed up. Woo! That was a stretch for me. And a lot of things you're going to experience this weekend are going to be a stretch for you as well. Here's what I ask you to be mindful of this whole weekend. What you want wants you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. You know, I used to say that all the time. And my mentor, Mark Victor Hansen, said to me, you know, Deborah, that's a really good title. You ought to write that down. <laughs> My first book was published 10 years ago. <laughs> it is called What You Want Wants You. And it's out in the bookstore at the product area. And it tells all about the journey to the pits and the, and the ride back from that. And then years later, as I was working in my business, taking the ideas that I had heard at events like this, facilitated by Mark, because believe me, it's going to be a mind-stretching weekend for you. But you have to not just listen to those ideas. You have to really use them. And as I began to use them in my life, amazing things began happening in my life. And believe me, I know it's not by coincidence. It's not by accident. It's by the law of attraction. Last year, my second book came out, which is called From Thin Air to Millionaire. And I talked about that one time because I said, you know, Mark, I built that business literally on my kitchen table and grew it into a multi-million dollar empire. I said, it went from thin air to millionaire. Once again, he said, you know, Deborah, that sounds like a good title. <laughs> I think you ought to write that down. For those of you that have hung out with Mark for any period of time at all, you know that he says, don't think it, ink it. He says that over and over and over again. You'll hear that this weekend. And so I took that information to heart. Thank you very much. Didn't just think it, but also inked it. And that second book was born. There are a lot of dreams that are going to be brought into reality here this weekend. But it means that you're going to have to be willing to play. I told Mark that I wanted to talk with you just a little bit about what does it mean for you to play full out this weekend. Oh, for one thing, I can't forget these details before I move into this last part, or Lisa will say you forgot to say this. Everybody, open up your manuals right now. Write your name inside your manual on the inside front cover. Write your name on your manual because all these manuals look alike. And if you don't have your name written in there, then people will pick it up and they won't know it's yours and all your valuable notes will be gone. So right now, open that up. And fill that in. Okay. This big white piece of paper that you have somewhere there in your materials is the evaluation of the program. 
I have been asked to announce to you that not only would they like for you to complete this evaluation, but it would be most helpful if you would complete this evaluation immediately after you have heard a speaker speak. And then on Sunday evening as you're leaving the program, you will be asked to turn in these evaluation sheets out in the product area as you're leaving the program and get this. For everyone who turns in an evaluation, there as they're leaving on Sunday evening, Mark and his staff have a gift for you immediately, just for turning in the evaluation. Let's give them some applause for that. That's immediate gratification. I like that. I like that very much. But obviously the evaluations are the things that help them to make the program better and better for you each time. Now, talking about making the program as effective as possible for yourself, I've said over and over again that you've got to be prepared to play and be fully engaged. A part of what that means is I'm going to challenge you to do something. I'm going to challenge you that with each and every speaker that you hear during the next three days, that you will look for at least one idea that that speaker has to share that will benefit you. I told Mark I was going to talk about this, and I told him, I said, I promise I won't mention any names. Last year, when I attended this conference, and I sit out there just like you, I've known Mark for 20 years, but I paid my registration fee, and I got myself here just the same as you guys have done, and I sat right out there as a student just like you. And I happened to sit next to a woman that at the beginning of the conference was very, very excited, and she's one of those people who's going to fix the Mark's commence to be start to be great pretty soon sometime as soon as she gets around to it. How many of you know people like that? You know, they're looking for somebody to do it to them. I'm going to come to this meeting and they're going to motivate me. They're going to inspire me. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. Nobody does anything to you. You just have to be ready to receive. Well, this woman started out great guns, and then lo and behold, there was a speaker on the platform, one of about 20,000 speakers that Mark brought up here. There was one speaker on the platform that she didn't click with. Well, that just ruined her whole weekend. Just run the whole thing for her. You know, she just couldn't get any benefit out of it. Now, here's what I challenge you not to do. Do not be her. And if she is here and she's sitting next to you, don't point. That's tacky. <laughs> don't do that. We want to be polite to everyone. Let's encourage her. Let's bless her. Hope she'll grow this time around. But here's the thing I want you to realize. Not every single person that comes across the stage is going to be the speaker for you. But I know for certain they're going to have one thing from which you can benefit. Write it down. If you've got speakers that you get a multitude of ideas from, then go back and figure out what's the best idea that I got from that speaker. A part of playing full out is welcoming the speakers as they come onto the stage. Mark has assembled for you an incredible, absolutely incredible array of speakers. I added this up pretty quickly in my head, Mark, and with what you have assembled here this weekend, if each and every one of us were to hire these people to come in and speak for us, I know for certain it would cost us in excess of $100,000 to get that speaker power. How many of you paid $100,000 for this event? Okay, nobody did yet, but that's the kind of value that you're going to get. Now, here's the thing that I want you to know. These speakers that are coming up here to share their wisdom, their knowledge, their years of experience with you, they're not being paid. Why are they doing it? Because each and every one of them knows that everything surrounding Mark Victor Hansen is about the circle and circulation of abundance. If they help you, in some ways it helps them, and the circle continues. But here's how I'm going to ask you to pay those speakers. Because they're here volunteering their time just to be of benefit to you. Let's face it, the people Mark has lined up here, they're not going to starve to death next month if they don't do this event. They've already done extremely well in their lives. They're here to give and to share with you from what they know, from what they've experienced. It's their gift back to you. Let's let this be our gift back to them. Each and every time that a speaker is brought to this platform, I would urge you to please express your gratitude, give them your energy, encourage them to give you their best that they've got by giving them a standing ovation when we bring them on stage. And you're getting ready to practice that right now because I'm getting ready to bring on the Director of Operations for the Hotel Radisson, Mr. Tim Weaver. Here we go. Give him some applause. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to Mark Vickerson Hansen and Associates. We appreciate your patronage tonight and through the weekend. I'd like to give you a little uh, surmise about the services we're going to provide for you. We have our Concord Lounge, which will be open at 6 in the morning for breakfast, as well as our Century Restaurant opens at 6 in the morning as well. It's open till 2 for lunch. After 2.30, we open our Palmetto Restaurant, which I saw some of you in there tonight enjoying our wonderful cuisine. 
It's open until 11 p.m. And room service is open from 6 in the morning until 12 o'clock at night. At the top of our rest, uh, hotel, we have the top of the Radisson, where you get a spectacular view of the airport. Again, that's open until about 1.30. For those who like to watch the planes come and go, it's, it is spectacular. Okay. A small reminder, you want to set your alarms for in the morning so no one's late and everybody's here on time and so you can enjoy your, yourself. And food for thought, don't forget food for your stomach. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Tim and his entire staff has been so wonderful and we, we thank you very much for the weekend that we're about to enjoy. Well, it's my pleasure now to bring on your next speaker. And I told you I would tell you just a little bit more about his influence in my life as I had an opportunity to bring him back to the stage. Twenty years ago, when Mark came into my life, one of the challenges I was having in my life was that I had a real block as it related to financial prosperity. I was one of those kids that was raised in the middle of rural America, raised on a farm. Now, being raised on a farm is a great experience, but there are some lessons that you can tend to get being raised on the farm that don't necessarily nurture you as far as financial abundance is concerned. One of the things that you're taught is that you have to work and you have to work hard and that life is a struggle. You get up early, you go to bed late, and if you live to the next day, <laughs> consider yourself lucky. Another message that I got growing up in that rural environment and I don't recall any one particular individual saying this to me exactly, but I was raised in a very strict fundamentalist religious type of upbringing. And somewhere along the way, I got the message in my head that if you became very successful and you made a lot of money, you had sold your soul to the devil. <laughs> now, I didn't want to do that. And so consequently, as I would be successful in my life and things would be going well for me, I would sabotage and self-destruct and get rid of the money. I did that over and over again three different times before I realized I had a role to play in that. So when Mark said to you that he's seen me come from money, not have money, and come back again, he's telling you the truth. Twenty years ago, he walked into my life. The student was ready. The teacher did appear. And one of the most valuable lessons Mark ever taught me is that money is spiritual. You are only a steward of it. Your job is to put it back into circulation, to bring everyone up to their highest and best good. You know, his most recent bestseller that he co-authored with Robert Allen, The One Minute Millionaire, The Enlightened Way to Wealth. That's not just a title. He lives that way. I've known him for 20 years. He's had the mindset of a multimillionaire in all those 20 years. I've heard it said that money only makes you more of what you already are. In this instance, the magnification of traits has been astounding. This man walks his talk. He lives in the path of enlightenment. He lives the principles of abundance daily. He doesn't believe his own press. He doesn't pay too much attention to what the brochure says. He's remained humble. He has the heart of a servant and is here to be of service to you this entire weekend. Please give a wonderful on-your-feet welcome as he returns to the stage, the Ambassador of Possibility, Mr. Mark Victor Hansen! Give Deborah one more round of applause, if you would, please. Thank you, Deborah. I couldn't have a better MC or a better friend for so long. We're going to move right along, if you're ready. Everyone touch yourself. Say, I'm ready. Shake your neighbor's shoulder. Say, I see you're ready. Some of you have seen these cartoons before, but it says, Quick complaining and eat it. Number one, chicken soup is good for the flu. Number two, it's nobody we know. Why do I start with these and Jack also starts with them? The deal is is that you need to do self-deprecating humor. That's where you put yourself down and just get started. We had famous people want to read our books. 
We've had famous people pass them along. And if you don't know what to do with their books, <laughs> obviously we've done Golfer Soul. We've done better than Tiger Woods. We're thankful to say our partner on that, just as a little sidebar, is Golf Digest. And, and this is one of the things you want to think about. We're going to teach you how to think holistically about your book because books are about marketing. And when you hit the stands, if you go through the normal publishing route, although my good buddy Dan Pointer who's here is going to teach you how to self-publish and make more money than most published authors. But you want to buddy up with some magazine. Take your finger, point to your temples, go, hmm, that's interesting. We'll go in depth on that later on. Mother of Soul, we've been number one on all the list. You know, New York Times, USA Today. Publishers Weekly, we're the, and Amazon simultaneously with Mother Soul every year. Why? Nobody ever did what I'm going to teach you today. Grow rich in your niche. Everyone say, grow rich in your niche. And we're going to introduce you to other people that do the same. Nurses Soul. Why do we do that? Because our health care system is falling apart. Notice I said the system is falling apart. We've got great medical doctors. We've got great nurses. But the system's failing. And I'm going to show you before the weekend's over. we got some brand new stuff that we love, our nurse friends. And Chicken Soup of the Expectant Mother Soul. One of my favorite stories out of that book is about a four-year-old who's a thumb sucker. And the parents have done everything. They've wrapped it, coated it, mercuricombed it, taped it. Nothing works. Right before they go to church, the dad says, boy, you keep sucking your thumb. Here's what's going to happen. Your stomach's going to expand, then it's going to explode. Sure enough, he sits in a pew at church right next to the woman who's nine months pregnant. <laughs> All the way through the service, he's looking at her. Then at the end of the final amen, he walks up to her and says, I know what you've been doing. <laughs> Teacher of soul, I taught as a university professor at uh, University of Colorado for a while, and Jack was an elementary school teacher. So we just it took us seven years to finish this book, but we love it. It was our number one book last year, so we enjoyed that. Smartest thing we did when we started Chicken Soup is we did this little thing with a. It said, "Look, if you've got a great story, send it to us. Take your finger, point your temples, go. Hmm, that's interesting. When you go into deep meditation, you need to do that because some days we get 500 stories from people willing to help us. And if you use a story now, we can afford to pay, and we pay about $300 a story, and it's www.chickensoup.com." What's our purpose? That's Jack, in case you haven't seen him. He would be here, except he had some other uh, talks to do that he booked in advance of when we did this, because he's booked out about two years in advance. It says, we want to change and heal the world one story at a time. To ensure we hit our objectives, we're going to use visuals. We're going to use affirmations. We're going to do PowerPoint. Do I want all of you, if you're not PowerPoint literate, to become PowerPoint literate? Go like this. Bill Gates studies... Walt Disney. Walt Disney said, hey, look, the whole mind is basically visual. 87% of your mind is visually oriented. He storyboarded Mickey Mouse. He storyboarded Fantasia. Gates says, holy cow, if I created storyboarding, and we'll call it PowerPoint, I could do all my projects. I'm flying into Orange County the other day. Guys sitting next to me said, fellow, there's a faster way to do that. And I said, show it to me. I, I want to I wanna become functional than that, you know, really good. And then I wanted to become an aficionado. He showed me what to do. And I said, what do you do? He says, I'm head of innovation at all of Microsoft. I said, my boy, my boy, my boy. <laughs> he sits with Bill Gates and Nathan Mulvold and Steve Ballmer. And what they do is they do PowerPoint their future projects. They put an impresario, a champion, what we call it in One Minute Millionaire, over each project. I said, how many projects Bill Gates working on simultaneously? 1,600. 1,600. I thought I was doing a lot at 58. I drive my wife and my staff crazy. So do I want you to PowerPoint stuff? Go like this. And I think you should PowerPoint your book because we're going to teach you how to fast write them and we're going to finish it with that with my good friend Marshall Thurber who's got a 300 IQ. He's on Bucky Fuller's staff with me and all that. On Sunday night, he's calling in. We're going to have stretches. Everyone stand up. Stretch. And sit down. We're going to have somebody stretch you first thing in the morning, but I'll introduce him to you in a few minutes. We're going to have some laughs. How many of you are willing to laugh this evening? Can I see you raise hands? Somewhere in your computer, remember, this is a workshop. So, you know, I, you know, the two drunks walking down the railroad track, one said the other, this is the longest staircase I have ever seen. Second drunk says, I don't mind the stairs, but the low handrails are killing me. I can get sucked into getting you to laugh because if you give people to laugh, they like you and I want you to like me. But the deal is you ought to collect clean humor. What kind of humor, everyone? clean and you want to do it as cartoons and that we're going to keep have notice it says time considerations i don't keep on time because it's more, the deal is that you're i'm going to stay on message but your deal is that we're going to do everything we can to get into your heart into your soul because you wouldn't be here if you didn't have inspirational discontent at some level and you're ready to grow touch yourself two fingers that wakes up the subconscious say i'm ready to grow 
We're going to open it up to your questions, but not just me. You can ask your neighbors the questions. You can ask all my peer speakers, all of whom are great friends, all of whom are, as Deborah said, open here. Their heart energy is open here. The soul energy is open here. You're going to get more than you paid for. That's the promise. And you're going to get ahas. And in sign language, it looks, I don't know if I can put this in my pocket, I guess. But it goes like this. Everyone go like this, please. In sign language, that's what it looks like, because you're going to get an aha. We're going to have activities and breakouts and all kinds of stuff. Some starting. Anyhow, there's a, everyone touch yourself, say there's a book in me. Everyone, there's a, actually we could put it books plural, but the world needs it. When I was with Dr. Buckminster Fuller, he said a book is a baby, except it has more longevity than your kid or your lineage, because it lives forever. Books can change the world. I'm scholarly in Mark Twain. He wrote a little book called Huck Finn, and back then Walmart didn't exist. There were no bookstores. So what he did is he had people go house to house to sell it because he wanted to end slavery by having a little boy talk to a giant black gentleman and say, hey, look, slavery doesn't make any sense. Just because they teach it in church and they teach it in the street doesn't make any sense. And he changed the ideation, the conceptual part of the world. Can you and I do the same thing? The answer is not maybe in that zone, but other zones. You're the only one that can write whatever you've got to contribute. You came here to contribute. Everyone say, I'm ready. Amen. Say, I'm going to do it. We love this cartoon. It says, by George, you really do have a book in you. <laughs> How many people are there here that are already published? Deborah asked that, but I just want to do it as a percentage. It looks like, wow, it looks like about 40 or 50 percent. How many of your fiction authors? She did not ask that. Looks like about 30%. Incidentally, fiction authors like my friend Nora Roberts, who was on the side of Coca-Cola cases for six months, um, 50 million cases a month for six months, and we raised enough money to get 15,000 kids off the street and into boys and girls clubs. Tonight and during this weekend, we're going to teach you bypass marketing. Right? Did we take any of the money for We're Selling Chicken Soup for the Couple Soul? Nora Roberts was selling hidden riches. All that money went to make sure those kids got to do it. Did it, our books sell more than ever before? Go like this. Why? Because what Bob and I teach in One Minute Millionaire is that to tithe, to give back, to pay forward, to use the movie title, isn't a subtraction. It's a multiplier. What is everyone A? And you're here to figure out new ways to multiply because if you multiply, if you give it out, it comes back to you. Anyhow, in fiction authors, in nonfiction, how many of you are nonfiction? Great. It looks like about 80% based on my rough read and my staff's doing it in the back. How many of you are self-published? Looks like about 40%, I would say. Great. And how many of you are with a publisher already? And just so you know, there are lots of publishers in the room. That looks like about 30%. Good. Of those not yet published, how many of you have your idea? And Deborah asked this, but I need to repeat it. It looks like 100%. Let me do it the other way. Anyone not got an idea? Incidentally, that's not bad to ask that question. You know, Jack... Basically came up with the idea, chicken soup for the soul. We were sitting right here in Hollywood. He did a breakfast talk at the Inside Edge at um, the Polo Lounge. We went out for breakfast afterward. I said, what are you doing? He had this idea, not called chicken soup yet. And he said, well, I'm going to do this. I said, let's do it together. I sent him some stories. We agreed, and we went forward. Bob was going to do uh, the One Minute Millionaire all alone and just wanted me to write the forward tomorrow when I'm teaching that part of what we've done to sell more books in less time than anyone else and go number one in one day, which no one's ever done before with Amazon. I'll tell you the whole story. But those guys had it. I just got to contribute. So we're going to teach you that there's four kinds of team members that you need. We teach it in One Minute Millionaire. You need a creative, which is basically what I am. Bob and Jack are both advancers. You need a refiner or an analyzer. Usually that's the legal type mind, the engineering mind, the medical mind. And then you need an executor, which is usually the publisher. You need all four. Wiggle four fingers. What do you need, everyone? All four. Everybody's needed. All of us need. Each of us need all of us. All of us need each of us is the deal. How many of you have your title ready? Could I see a raise of hand? Looks to me like about 40%. Titles are everything. We'll talk about that again tomorrow at length. But test your title, and we're going to test some titles on you. Bob and I have got a couple new books that we're wanting to test titles on you. We're going to show you exactly how to do it. The question you ask about a title is always, will you buy it? Not do you like it, because they want to be nice to you. Will you give me real hard, cold cash? Or <laughs> Zig says it's warm, friendly, green, goes with everything I wear. Anyhow, how many of you have a written outline? We're going to show you how to fast write that, too, because there's... Why take a long time if you can do it in a short time? Who moved my cheese? My friend, Dr. Spencer Johnson, who teaches virtual business at Harvard, right? 
wrote that in three months after he got divorced because he was being... How many of you read Who Moved My Cheese? Looks like almost everyone. Right? It's, it, he makes $2 million a month with that book still. But it, we're going to teach you that it takes a year and a half to get a bestseller. The hard part is getting it in what they call momentum phase. Once you've got momentum and you've got your mojo mowing, it's easy to keep it going. But he wrote it because he was hem and haw rather than sniff and scurry. But he did the outline and just did it. And then his best friend... You need a friend to be your gadfly, to use this Socratic term, right? You need somebody to put the key in, turn on the ignition so you can take your life where you want it to go. And that's what I think this seminar is going to do. What we do in a cover of the One Minute Millionaires, we say, look, all of us are metaphorically caterpillars. You come into the crystallis, the seminar, and I can feel a lot of your hearts opening up. This is where you emerge as a butterfly. Everyone say, I'm ready. Because this sem- seminar is not just informational, it's transformational. How many of you already got the book done? Could I see a raise of hand? Some of you are going to find out that that was a good first effort, but it's going to be something that it may be the third book, the fourth book, that takes you forward and it'll suck up all the rest of the books. John Grisham couldn't get anybody to take his first book. It wasn't until he had his third book. Then they went back and every one of his books have rocked, inclusive of King of Torts, which I will read on holiday in two weeks when I'm in Hawaii, But because I've not missed anything that Grisham's written because he's a commandingly good author. And some of you say, well, I don't read fiction because I write nonfiction. No, you need to read everything. What do you need to read, everyone? But in King of Torts, and I know we've got a lot of attorneys in here. My little brother has been visiting with me. We are in. Uh, we went to um, Catalina yesterday with our families. Um, is an attorney, but he ends up owning all the dry cleaners in Boulder because he had 600 attorneys working for him. And so this is too much stress. He says, now the only stress he gets, so he says, can you have this shirt ready by 6 o'clock, pal? You know, just... <laughs> Anyhow, in King of Torts, what I saw Grisham say to Katie Couric was, young attorneys come in and they go attack little entrepreneurial companies that are just starting to make it, and, you know, if they take 10 of those cases on contingency, they retire after 10 years. I don't believe that's the right use of our legal system. I believe that Grisham now has made it and is willing to start saying, hey, look, the legal system sucks right now. It is caving in on itself because it is imploding. All systems have to be changed. Who changes them? You and I do. Those of us that communicate, those of us that write, those of us that become articulate, those of us that think clearly, those of us that take a new higher posture and come out of a space of wisdom and understanding and clarity and say, hey, look, the system isn't going to work if all you do is attack and all you do is... And I'm not saying there's not some stuff that's illegally being done. But I mean, up until last week, all the OBGYNs were quitting. Why? The insurance is a million dollars a year. They couldn't afford it. So what do we do? We had to change the law to the limit of insurance liability is 250000 Do we need to get rid of the 2 to 5% of doctors that are no good? Absolutely. But the system has to change from the inside out. Anyhow, they're not what we're doing about it. Can we change stuff with the written word? The answer is, and Richard Greninger did a great job with the opening video here. So this is not changing. There we go. How many of you have written a proposal? Could I see a raise of hands? And we're going to show you exactly what we did because I want you to model it. And as I go through it, what you've got to do is ask only one question. What can I do that's actionable? Everyone say actionable. Who's looking for a literary agent in the room? Could I see a raise of hands? By the way, we have a couple dozen of them. We also have somebody I came down in the elevator with that's a uh, cooperative. Agent, I'd never heard of such a thing. I thought it was a great title. Why? Because people are picking new niches. And one of our last speakers is going to be Jillian Manis. There's lots of agents in the room. What you're going to discover, and we're going to invite one up here in a minute to talk to you, is the beauty of this place is that if you use your inner knower, you'll be drawn to the right person because everybody doesn't need the same agent. All of us need to resonate to different people. Does that make sense? I mean, Margaret McBride, who I don't think is in the room. Are you in the room, Margaret? Does all the stuff with Kenny Blanchard and and Spencer Johnson. Does a brilliant job because she resonates at that level. She does, you know, she wouldn't do something like Deepak. Deepak resonates with somebody else. That's perfect. There's an agent out there for, touch yourself, say me. Okay. Who's planning on self-publishing? Because you raise hands. That looks like about 30%. I would ask you all to consider Hutton self-publishing. We're going to teach you, and Dan Pointer is the master's master of this, and he self-publishes in a marketplace, in multiple marketplaces, one of which is how to parachute, which, you know, if you've never parachuted, you want to read Danny's stuff. How I Spent My Summer Vacation by Liliana. All rights reserved, which includes, whoops, I need to go back. This is good. 
which <laughs> includes the right to reproduce the essay or portion zero in any form whatsoever, including but not limited to novels, screenplay, musical, television, miniseries, home video, interactive, CD-ROM. <laughs> Yeah, her daddy is a lawyer that OD'd her, I think. Or mommy, whatever. Okay. First lady I want to bring up here, and I need the handheld if I could. Could I have Rita Emmett to start to make her way to the stage? This lady has been here multiple times. Here. She has got a great story to tell. She has got multiple books. I had your books up here. I'll give you one. Now I have two. Good. Would you tell them your story? When did you come here? How many years ago? 98. And what happened? I was um, afraid that I didn't know how to market or promote, and I wasn't sure I'd learn, and um, I left her with a joy of promoting books, just a joy. Oh, what happened to the books? The first book, this is Chicken Soup for the Procrastinator's Soul. Did anyone oh, how many of you procrastinate? Could <laughs> no, I see raise hands? All of us. Okay, this is the Procrastinator's Handbook. It's been out a little over two years. How many of you sold? 130,000 in the U.S., uh, 69,000. Give her a round of applause, please. We don't know how many I'll total. Thank you, thank you. Some of you are sitting there going, well, I can't do what Mark does. I never asked you to do what I do. All no. I'm doing is saying, look, there's no limit on where you can go. Do you think there's a limit on where you no, can go? No, there isn't. No. And what now, happened this with this one? one? This, is the procrast this one is four months old. The Procrastinating Child, a handbook for adults to help kids stop procrastinating. And we thought it would be a much smaller audience And ten days after it came out. They had to, the publisher had to do a second printing of uh, another 10,000 copies. <laughs> now, hold them both up. Hold them both up. Okay. And both these books, even now, right now as we speak, in, are in the April issue of seven major magazines. The April issue of Better Homes and Gardens. I'm not going to name them all. Family Circle, Women's Day, and a whole And what TV books. shows have you been on? I was on with Katie Couric. Did that blow your mind? It did. And... As we sat there before the nobody uh, nobody knows this, we sat there before the camera was rolling and my knees were shaking so much I put my hands on my knees so my hands were shaking, and she said to me, "Don't put your hands on your knees; it shows even more." And she went to the end of a coffee table and picked up this big fluffy floral arrangement and put it in front of my knees so nobody would see them shaking. <laughs> so. Anybody else looks at this picture and they think it's just pretty. You guys know there's a purpose for it. <laughs> Have you been scared during the process? Yeah, yeah. From the whole beginning. I don't know anybody. <laughs> I don't know anybody who ever, before Mark Victor Hansen started to do this, I don't know anybody who offered to have the kindness or the generosity to teach authors how to promote things. And when I came here, I was so scared, and I thought, I don't know how to promote. And when I left, you're going to leave not only knowing wonderful ideas to promote and meeting people who will help in your business and, and probably be lifelong friends, but you're going to have this joy of promoting that he taught me. And he said, challenge for creativity. Now, hold, the, the, hold that one, just that one. Now, this one. I get my hair cut in one beauty salon, and I get a monthly pedicure now. That's one of my luxuries where they massage your feet and everything, and a separate one. And you know why? They may not know, because now both salons sell my book. <laughs> let, me, let me just hitchhike on that. <laughs> and, and when I landed that second one and they put it in there, I, I came out feeling so smug, like, oh, Mark Victor Hansen told me to challenge my creativity. I wonder if he has his book in a beauty salon. And that same day, this is God's whimsical sense of humor, I went in a bagel store in Chicago and they were selling your book in a bagel store. It was like curses. Rats. It's called bypass marketing. I got I got to... Because Rita and I are great friends. So a lot of you and I will become great friends. I hope that's true for all of us, and you'll befriend her also. This last week, we, got, we started by selling our books to people who did fingernails and that, and in a nail salon. And this week, uh, we took the pictures for the cover story of New Yorker magazine. That's the third most read magazine. It's read by America's intellectual elite. They spent one week with Jack in his office, and they hang out with, hung out with me. And they had, I've never had a pedicure in my whole life. Oh, they're wonderful. Oh, they are wonderful. It has nothing to do with nail polish. It has nothing to do with no. nail polish, but I didn't know that. So this week, I've got pictures with me getting my, my nails done. They were cutting Dax hair, and they had 20 drop-dead beautiful women surrounding us. They were just patrons of this place. They thought it was the best thing that ever happened. They're telling me that the 
pedicure people are selling your book rats. <laughs> now, I'll tell you about a creative challenge on the, no, hold up, that one now. The Procrastinating Child book, I called the president of the publishing company, Walker and Company, who does my book, and I said, you know, kids for fundraisers sell those big, chunky candy bars for a million bucks. Wouldn't this be a good fundraiser? He said, I don't know anything about fundraisers. I said, neither do I. Will you give the, a, a school a discount? And he will. Would you write a cover letter saying the book's wonderful? And he did. And we're going to offer it. So if anybody here wants me to send a letter to your school, give me your business card. Give her a round of applause, would you, before you run away. Isn't that a perfect I love it. I love it. Really. What do you recommend to the student that's sitting here like you that's shaking and nervous? And remember how you were just a couple yeah. of you? You've never missed one of these but since you've started coming. But And she brings all her friends. How many people you got here today? I don't know, but there's some wonderful, excited people here. They are really excited, too. So what do you tell to the people that are sitting here scared and going, Rita can do that, but I can't do it? I, I Don't even worry. You know what? People say, how do you get over the fear? I don't think you do. I think you just do it scared and, you know, just, you know, really, don't you? you don't you get those stuff scared? I was nervous before I came. Not nervous. Deborah and I were talking about when it's your own group, you get excited because there's a lot of money sitting on the floor here. And, <laughs> they, and you don't want to screw it up. What if they don't like you? Oh, no. <laughs> give Rita one more round of applause, if you would please. Thank you. Did you give those away to somebody in the audience? You just walk up right now. Right now and wait. Who's the worst procrastinator? She wants to give away the books. Okay. Jennifer Basie Sanders, have you made it here? Jennifer, are you in the room? Jennifer may be here tomorrow. Let me just introduce you briefly to her tonight. Jennifer, you're here. Make your way up here. Um, Jennifer attended from Prima Publishing. Now, they're a business house. Like many agents sitting in a the room, they stay incognito. This is why you got to use your inner intuition to find out because they are here. They want you as much as you want them, but they don't want 700 people hitting on them all at the same time. Take your finger, point at your temples, go, hmm, that's interesting. She will tell a story tomorrow or whenever she ultimately shows up, but she was, I think, making $50,000 a year, and I'm not picking on her at Prima. She sat there here to hire people like you, like she brought... Ty Hicks to the fore, who's one of my favorite uh, self-help action writers and a, a money writer. And uh, she said, holy cow, I could do this. And she immediately started doing Christmas books, which the first one I think she made $175,000 on the next year. Then she did these other books like uh, Complete Idiot's Guide to Publishing Magazine Articles, Complete Idiot's Guide to Getting Published. She did uh, 101, uh, what is that? I can't tell what that says. It's too, whatever it is, Extra Income Opportunities for Women. And then uh, the million heiress across the street, and she is making an absolute fortune right now. And Random House, which is one of the houses I'm with, came back to her and said, Holy cow, you are doing all that. You keep doing that, and what we want you to do is work one day a week with us. Take your finger, point to your temples, go, hmm, that's interesting. Because Bob and I are teaching two things. You must have multiple sources of income. Everyone say multiple sources. And number two, you've got to have residual income. Everyone say residual income. The question is, what percentage of your time are you creating a residual income, one that just keeps coming in? And the reason you write the next book and you have a list of hundreds of books that you're going to write is that sooner or later you'll zone in with the person that you're going to co-write with. And I happen to love co-authorship, right? I don't need any more co-authors. That was not a solicitation. Um, you know, just for me, it works. I love working with Jack. I love working with Bob. I love right now I'm writing with Art Linkletter. We're finishing book, How to Make the Rest of Your Life the Best of Your Life. Why? Because Art Linkletter, the two people with the highest Q rating, this is a quality rating in America for trust, are a little guy named Walter Cronkite and the other guy is named Art Linkletter. Well, Art Linkletter is 90 years old. Made his first fortune with Hula Hoop, right? Brought it from Australia when he saw it. Bought a two million acre ranch in Australia. When he met the prime minister, the guy was bitching, moaning, and complaining about the outback being wasteful. We've got some Aussies in the room. And he said, well, what will you give it to me for? He said, 15 cents an acre. Art pulls out his checkbook, writes a check for 30 grand, says, I'll take 2 million acres. And the prime minister gave it to him. He brought a horticulturist, agriculturist, agronomist over there, made the whole place bloom, has still the biggest sheep ranch in the world. It was on all those shows, ABC, NBC, CBS, with kids say the darndest things and all that. And he now, at 90 years old, has the next company he thinks is going to be Coca-Cola, which is Duke Solar Power, which is a solar cell the size of your thumbnail that will raise temperature 700 degrees, which means in the equatorial belt will suddenly have essentially free energy. And energy, we're going to become green power, which for those of you, thank you, those of you that are aware of what that means... 
It's like my nephew asked me in the jacuzzi the other night, Uncle Marky, what do you mean by green power? Well, I said, look, we've got to get off the hydrocarbons. It takes millions of years to create that, the petrochemicals, and, and we've got a president that doesn't understand what is happening on this, and I know that's supposed to do political stuff. But we've got to do wind. We've got to do geothermal. We've got to do tidal. We've got to do solar. We've got to, we've got to become energy self-sufficient, not just for America, but in fact for the whole world, and we're going to do it in this decade. Yes or yes? It's in line because it's my seminar. I get to go push the edge of the envelope, and you are allowed to write in there. Well, I don't agree with you. That's okay. You can disagree, but you can also leave. I don't care. Next, Linda Hollander. Are you in the room? Good. Come on up here. She has written a great book called Bags to Riches. So she is the lady that is bagging all the money. Would you introduce yourself and say what has happened to Hello. you? Hello. How's everybody tonight? Well, I've become known as the wealthy bag lady. Hold it up. I love these books. <laughs> uh, some of you know me and you know my story, but uh, basically it's kind of similar to Deborah's because 15 years ago I was in terrible debt and I was afraid That's to right. go to my mailbox because there were bills there I couldn't afford to pay. And I was in an abusive relationship with a man and I said, you know what, I don't want to live this way. I want a better life and a bigger life, and I want my life to make a difference. So I started my own business called The Bag Lady, and we produce the custom printed paper and plastic shopping bags that you see in shopping malls and at trade shows. Now, I did that, and I noticed there were no books on the market for women who wanted to start, right, and succeed in their own business. So I decided to write one. And that's what this book is. It's the only book right now for entrepreneurial women. What percentage of businesses or startups are now women? Women are starting businesses at twice the rate of men. Woohoo! There are 9.1 million women-owned businesses in the country. And they're the fastest growing economic sector. And what do you think is going to happen with your book? Well, uh, since it's come out... I am organizing and I'm the event chair for the Women's Small Business Expo. The book is giving me a lot of leverage to garner some top corporate sponsors like Wyndham Hotels, like Hyundai Motor Cars and Wells Fargo Bank. And incidentally, the book's only been out for a couple of weeks, <laughs> but I've already been asked to speak at a Microsoft event. And I want you to hold this up because I have been associated with Bob Allen and Mark Victor Hansen. I've developed my speaking skills. And look what the publisher did for me. This one? This one. They gave me a full page in their catalog because the publisher saw me speak and conduct a seminar, and she saw that I could motivate women, and I could promote and market myself because of what I learned from Mark Victor Hansen and Bob Allen. And this is unheard of for a first-time author with no track record to get a full page in a publisher's catalog. Talk about one of the joint venture relationships you're doing with any one of those corporations, um, Wyndham Hotels or anyone. Wyndham Hotels, well, they're, they're sponsoring my expo. I thought, I put my creativity cap on, and I thought, how can I finance a book tour? And I came up with a women's small business expo, and the corporations are just loving it. Because it the women's market is so strong right now. Give her a great round of applause, would you please? Thank you. Okay, so who wants to bag the riches as a woman? Because she's going to give you that book. So let me raise your hand. She's going to give it to you. All right. Next man I want to introduce you to is has got a phenomenal track record. He is the online weight loss coach. He's got over 3 million people in his database. He has got an eight-minute program that he's been very kind to take both Bob and I through. He has been on Oprah's show and just wowed it. He is going to come up here in a minute. We're going to ask you to go beyond, beyond, because he is currently doing his infomercial with the biggest infomercial company, which has got the Ranker, and they are videotaping through the uh, portals. Your sister is back hiding over there, so she's going to be shooting from behind. We're shooting from before. So would you give a standing ovation to Jorge Cruz, if you would, please, my dear friend. Thank you. How's everyone doing tonight? Thank you, Mark. Please sit down. Well, it's such a pleasure to be here, Mark. I have to tell you, this man has changed my life, seriously. I was at this very event four years ago, and um, just starting off, uh, didn't have an idea. had an idea, but wasn't a refined one. And I asked myself a question. I said, what could I do that would make this happen? 
and accelerate it in kind of in a more compressed way. And so one of the things I had learned off earlier, just likely in life, was that if you want to be successful, you want to hang around people who are doing well. That proximity is power. And who you're with is who you become. And that's one of the most important things you're probably going to learn out of today. Because I told Mark, I need to share with everyone a kind of a, an inkling of what it's like. Because I've been so fortunate. I, uh, about a, what was it, about a year ago, I got a call from two people at one time. And it wowed me. Because to go from nothing, you know, literally where uh, I had started with nothing in the sense of an idea, uh, no money, just living at my parents' home, literally, and not having my own place, not married, not dating. I was just working. Uh, things weren't that good. And then go to a place where I've been, I've had the, the blessing to be on shows like Oprah and Good Morning America and CNN and covered in the New York Times, People Magazine, Dateline NBC. I mean, it's just extraordinary. To get here, it was just like a wow happened where I got this call a year ago. My wife was with me. And uh, it was two, it was within an hour, I got two calls. But the first call was from my publisher saying that our book had hit the New York Times. And for me, that was like a dream come true because I never thought that we would get there that quickly within a year of publishing. And then an hour later, I got a call from a person I had been working with um, to try to get our program to license it into, a, uh, into an info commercial and saying that they wanted it and they had signed the deal. It was for my attorney. And he said, it's done. And I said, whoa. Oh, yeah, give him a lot of applause. You it was powerful. So, and I'll tell you, that has all happened because of one thing. And the most important thing I learned from Mark, probably more than anything else, that you're going to all learn this weekend is to learn that who you're with is who you become, that proximity is power. If you want to become a best-selling author, who do you have to hang out with, everyone? That's right. And you're, here's my role model right here. This man I've looked at and I studied. I went to the event, listened to this, you know, once I got the tapes, listened to those tapes literally day after day for probably a year, you know, and you want to hear that material over and over and again. There's a, uh, something I learned from a, another mentor, Anthony Robbins, is that repetition is another skill. And we want to do that. So I'm just so excited that I'm here to be able to share with you guys. Um, now, one of the projects Mark mentioned that I've got going on is this info commercial that we're doing with Guthrie Ranker. And how many people have heard of that company? I don't know if you've... Uh, Guthrie Ranker does a little unknown guy named Tony Robbins. Yeah. <laughs> the only guy in our business that sold $3 billion worth of stuff called Power. Power. You know, or the, uh, the well, personal power. Yeah, personal power. Now get the edge. The back end is power. Yep. Power. And it was funny. He asked me to be in his show. And I'm actually, if you've seen the Get the Edge show, I'm in there for a little second. And it's funny then to, when I told him that, you know, I've got my own deal now, you know, because I've been hanging out with some good people. <laughs> and so that's the power of what you can do tonight. And if you guys all have dreams, and how many people do have dreams here tonight? And want to make them happen, though? Say yes. Well, you're in the right place. And you've got to ask. You've got to be more aggressive in the sense of, not aggressive, but maybe more assertive. If you've had a question, you've never asked it, now is the time to ask it. You know, not necessarily now when we're speaking, but with the people that you're meeting here. And after the conversations that we have, you want to take action. You don't want to wait and say, well, you know, be passive. You don't want to be necessarily aggressive and be rude, maybe, <laughs> and, and be courteous to people. But you do want to be assertive. And you want to get excited like you were a kid, like it was Christmas. And you were like, this is the best day ever. And today, anything can happen. Because guess what? It can if you decide. And how many people have already decided that it will happen? Yeah. Wonderful. Well, congr that, that I congratulate you already because it will happen. And it's so exciting once you get to that point to be able to be invited and fly first class to Chicago and be on Oprah's show. And what it's... happened to your database right after that? Well, and that, the funny thing, my database, we have a, a website that has now over 3.5 million people in our database, Mark, you know, and it's massive. That means opt-in, so can you communicate as much as you want? Oh, you bet. You Does bet. that mean you can sell more stuff? Well, we've got, I've got three more books coming out this year with my publisher, which is Rodale and HarperCollins. I've got but, this... By the way, Rodale does some interesting stuff. Yeah. You don't mind if we tell No, them. not at all. Ro Rodale has one book like his. They put eight titles on it. They do the direct mail piece, but ever they buy is what they sell, and then they change the title. See, a lot of you get locked in in your title, but Ardeth Rodale took over. Unfortunately, her son died. It was her husband originally who started this great company, and it is a great company out in the PA. Do we have any reps from Rodale here? I'm not selling, hustling Rodale, but aren't they an interesting house to work Well, their, their specialty is health and fitness, and that's what I've become because of my first appearance on Oprah. And that was actually before the book came out. Uh, literally, I had gone from nothing to 3.5 million people, you know. And now I'm kind of known as the weight loss specialist for people who don't have time. That Mark will tell you, one of the most valuable lessons you all have to listen to here is if you're going to be a best-selling author, you have to have something that's unique 
and something that's different. And you'll learn about a USP, right, Mark? That yep. is the unique most important proposition. thing. The unique selling proposition, your selling point. What makes you different than everyone else? And so for me, it's not I'm just not, I'm not a fitness expert or health expert, but weight loss, and not just weight loss, because there's Jenny Craig, there's Richard Simmons, there's all those people. But weight loss for people who don't have time. That's my niche. How many so, of you don't have any time to exercise? Because I would like big, to lose some big, weight. <laughs> the big question my dear friend asks is, you know, all of us say, well, Oprah says you've got to exercise an hour and a half. And we all say, I would, but I don't have the time. Yeah. So time is probably the most valuable wound for everyone. And fortunately, no one had ever really said that that's their niche. And so I decided to claim it. And you'll learn about that this weekend. And Mark will teach you the strategies to do that. And tomorrow morning, after we have the breakout sessions, but right before we start officially, you're going to do how many minutes with well, that? I, well, what I'd like to do, actually, I think we, we figured this out so we don't interfere with anything. It's 7 o'clock. Nothing starts until after 7, right, Mark? Oh, right. So it's 7 o'clock in the lobby. For anyone who would like to learn my 8-minute moves, which you just do literally at home, and would like to at least lose 25 pounds, 20 to 25 pounds, seriously. I have 25 books my publisher sent, and I'm going to take you through an 8-minute session. Free. I'm going to do it for free, and the books are free. But I want to limit it to 25 that are really sincerely interested in losing at least 20, 25 pounds, and we'll meet in the lobby. So we don't create a stir up here or anything like that, and we'll go outside or do something private. But for about 25 people, and if you want to join and just want to hang out on the outskirts, that's fine too. But how many people would be interested in at least coming out with me in the morning? Good. All right. Well, the first there at 7, we'll come out and I'll have books. And if you have a book, then you can hang out with me. And then afterwards, uh, if you're interested, you can also do that. But can we do one, one, the one last thing? The, the, yep. uh, the, get him to go shot? crazy. Okay. Now, here's the thing. My uh, lovely sister, Marta. Everyone give Marta a big round of applause. Yeah, give Marta a round. For all her hard work. She's an author in the making. She's here. And within a year, I predict she's going to be the number one author on relationships, but not just any kind of relationships, extraordinary relationships. Well, that's she is, good. She's amazing. So she's here just like you all. I said, Marta, come. She's been wanting it. She's got a book in her, and she's going to do this. But she's offered to help me with the, with the shot we're going to do right now. Now, I want you all to stand up with me. Please take a stand. And we're going to do an eight. We're going to go a little crazy. But before, I'm going to have you do one eight-minute move. That'll take five seconds. And we're going to do a special move to help tone the thighs and the hip area. Because how many people would like to shed weight off of that area? You know, so we're going to do an eight-minute move, and you'll do it all with me. And then at the very end, we're going to go crazy. And, we're, and remember, energy is power. And how many people have energy right now? Say yes. Yes. All right. But the more energy you have, the more power and creativity you have, and the more your impact will be. And how many people want a powerful impact with their book? Say I. Aye. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a move to get us warmed up, and then we're going to kind of go crazy. I want you all to kind of give me all the energy you have and kind of take it to from a four maybe to a ten. We're going to go... <laughs> Sorry, sorry. We're going to do something do that like that. But first, we'll do the move. So Never let's do the move okay. first, and it's very easy. Let me put the mic down. You can all hear me, right? No, no, no. Here, we get, I'll hold it up for you. Hold it up for you. All right. So the first move we're going to do. I'll be the handheld well, mic. Well, you just watch. What we're going to do is take your hand out like so, and you're going to come straight down like this and squat, and you're going to hold and take it up. That's the move. Now, let me do one move without the mic so we get a good one on shot on camera. All of you out there, do the move with me because you're all on tape now, okay? So take the hands out like so and come down on three. Ready? One, two, three. Take it down. Hold it. Hold it. And up. Exhale. I want to hear the exhale. On the way down, everyone. Inhale. And then exhale on the way out. Deep breath in. Exhale. Exhale. One more breath. Deep, deep one in. And exhale. All right. Now we're going to take a deep stretch. Now, are you ready to take your energy up? Yeah. All right, on three, and maybe a little music too. Pick some great music. And what we're going to do is we're going to just jump up and down and take the energy up. We're going to shake the room. Ready? One, two, and three. Go! Yeah. Give him a round of applause, you please. Thank you, Jorge. Thank you. Thank you. Lori, where are you? And bring your pig, would you? This sounds like a terrible thing to do. <laughs> this beautiful blonde lady attended the seminar, and you will tell them the story, if you would, please. Okay. Um, 
For all you first timers, I'm a little nervous up here. But I came here a year ago with an idea and a dream. And these guys helped me manifest my dream. And it was to teach financial literacy to children. Is that good or is that good? <laughs> Remember, I said grow rich in your niche. Everyone's got a niche. Everyone say, I got a niche. Everyone say, I got lots of niches. You don't have because some of you say, well, I'm going to go steal theirs. And I don't need to do that. <laughs> so I started with a book. And from the book, I realized that there were no financial tools for the children. So I designed a piggy bank that would teach them how to give, invest, and save. Show it again. Spend Here's the major piggy bank, and then this is give. So this is the 70, 10, 10, 10. And it's got give, invest, and save. All their own compartments. Can you zone in on that? How many of you want to have your kids learn how to give, invest, and save? See, because kids, when they're little, if they're taught right, will give you a shirt off their back. Is that true, Lori? Uh, my kids give now, and it's the best feeling in the whole world. And I was not raised with giving. I was raised, I was raised to save. I found what I wanted, and then I spent it. So I was no better off than anybody else out there. And my husband was raised with poverty thoughts also. So this will teach them a positive, healthy way to save their money and to spend their money. So and they're going to get this with every book, is that correct? Well, the, the tag goes into detail of what each book is for. From there, I created a children's book that is almost done, is ready to go to the printer. I have an allowance chart that I designed that will show the parents how to pay the children so the children can make enough money to put into the piggy banks. Because if you don't pay a child enough money, then they grow up with poverty thoughts. They go, well, everything costs too much. I don't have enough money. So, and it has nothing to do with that. It has, you don't make enough money, exactly. not that it costs too much money. Exactly. So um, the allowance chart will be out in about eight weeks. And I had a deadline. My deadline was a year. I wanted to get it done. But I did everything that Deborah said. I came here, and my kids call me SpongeBob. They're like, you just soak it all up. But I do. I soak everything up. And I bought the tapes, the, the CDs. And I listened to them over and over and over. And I did everything that they told me to do. And it has happened. And I have, so I have three books and two products, a company, Prosperity for Kids Incorporated. And I did it all within a year. And it was because of these guys. Give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Francine, are you here? Here, come on up, come. She is one of our speakers tomorrow, and she has got an extraordinary uh, story to tell, which she is going to give the glittering highlights of, and we just didn't want to miss her because she is gorgeous, she is attractive, she is from San Francisco, and, when you, and she is a doctor of jurisprudence, she is a lawyer, she is going to teach intellectual property law tomorrow, but when you hear her story, yes, when you hear her story... You're not. You're not going to believe your story. Oh wow! First, welcome. It is so awesome to see you guys. I was here for the first time last year, and uh, this is my second time. And the greatest lesson I learned last year from Mark was not to rely on my publisher to do anything. Anything but sell the book, to distribute the book. I learned that last year, and when Esteemable Act came out at the very end of January, we hit the San Francisco Chronicle bestseller list the first week out. Give her a round of applause. So, How did you do that? First, let me tell a story. Please. May I? Please. Because my, my story really is incredible, and I think for anybody sitting in here tonight thinking you can't do it, listen up for a second. The book is Esteemable Act, and... I had, it, it's taken me 10, only 10 short years to write this book. When I finally became willing to put pen to paper, I had one agent after another, 16 to be exact, who rejected me, who said, you are insane. Number one, self-esteem is not a popular topic anymore. Or they said to me, who do you think you are to write a book on self-esteem? You're not a therapist. Go find a therapist and then come back to us. Because I didn't give up, I finally came upon an agent who understood 
that what gave me credibility was my personal story. And she took this book that nobody would buy, sold it to Random House for six figures. First Some people don't author. know what six figure means. Tell them what that means. The exact number? No, 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 no. No, Just, six it figures means over hundred thousand dollars. Over hundred thousand dollars for a first time author, first time book. A little bit about my story. At 14 years old, I was strung out on heroin, and I was an alcoholic. Today, I am 23 and a half years sober. At 18 years old, thank you. At 18 years old, I was a high school dropout living on the streets of New York. Today, I am a graduate of Georgetown University Law Center and no longer live on the streets of New York. At 21 years old, I was a call girl, paying lawyers an awful lot of money to keep me out of jail. Today, I am a lawyer, a successful businesswoman, a loving wife, and I get to add a newly published author to my credentials. At 26, I was hit by a car, and I was told I'd never walk again. And in my 40s, I ran not one, but two 26.2 marathons within three months of each other. And finally, at 28 years old, all I could ever think about was myself. That's all I thought about. And today at 50, my life is about giving back to other people on a consistent basis. How I got from there to here is by doing those things I call esteemable acts. Walking through my fear, facing my challenges, and taking responsibility for the choices I've made in my life. Give her a standing ovation, please. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Next lady I want to introduce is with uh, Melanie. Would you come up here, please? Melanie Euler is with the infomercial company where Bob and I have, are doing our infomercials. We did, Bob did an infomercial called Creating Wealth with Real Estate, which is right now the number one earning uh, infomercial uh, per week in America. She's with a lovely guy named Larry Pino, who is the guy who owns Dynatech, who is the um, fastest hiring business right now in Orlando. They're just on the front page of a paper. Both of us were interviewed by the same paper. We were down in Orlando trying to turn around the economy of the state of Florida with Jeb Bush a couple weeks ago. And um, Melanie, would you, would you first of all introduce yourself and say whatever you want to say about infomercials, and then I'll ask you the questions that everyone would like to know. How, what do you do with Dynatech? I am a client client manager, sorry. I'm a client manager. I represent uh, Bob and Mark's interest for the company. We do a, a large variety of things under one roof. The largest corporation do what we do. We are what's called a business process outsource provider. In fact, that what that basically means is we're a multimedia uh, marketing arm. We do infomercials, seminar trainings all across the country. Um, we have uh, direct mail. We do a lot of different things, so it's it's really quite dynamic. How many infomercials we got on TV right now? Right now we have seven. Can you name them off the top of your head, other than One Minute Millionaire and <laughs> Creating Wealth? Well, we're working on quite a few more, actually. Uh, we're finishing up Bob Allen's uh, DRTV for real estate. Tell them what We've DRTV got is. Direct Response Television. Incidentally, that's the way we're going to teach you how to sell your books. You do not ever, ever, ever want institutional ads. They are useless. Direct response means what? Oh, I'll tell you what it means. <laughs> is Does it, is it, is that mean that you put out an ad, it brings back money? And the amount of money that Larry, can we, we are going to do with Larry um, some giant seminars. We're going to do, we're doing one on real estate right now. And we just did one on March 15th here, and it was called... Uh, Super Real Estate Rally with Bob, and Bob is the featured speaker because Bob is the main guy. And they're going to have seven other speakers on the platform. And Larry spends about how much money on t we start? Media loan. Was Media loan was how much? $125,000. $125, by the time you bring in a celebrity, by the time you pay for the house, you're out 250000 So all that money has got to come back before anyone can get paid. And in the infomercial business at this level, there's two kinds of levels. There's do the seminars, which is what he is famous for, because Larry used to work with a man named Chuck Gibbons. Chuck Gibbons. Chuck yes. Gibbons is a guy who wrote Wealth Without Risk, and Larry happened to be his lawyer. He's an Esquire. 
I mean, he would have been here except his wife is delivering a baby. Pretty soon. Either today or tomorrow. So he <laughs> said, no, I don't think I should be there. <laughs> Otherwise, Larry would be also with us. Um, so the other way, so one is that, that you do an infomercial and you bring them into a seminar. You've seen where they, in this area, you run an infomercial and it says go to a Holiday Inn or a Marriott or a Radisson here in L.A. and here in Orange County and here in Dana Point. And then the other way to do it is that you sell a product. Would you tell them how we're doing a product on the One Minute Millionaire? For One Minute Millionaire system is actually a kit that uh, includes several booklets, uh, workbook, videotapes, cassettes and or CDs. It's all a system and telling you how to do a, a certain whatever the, the product is that you're wanting to do. So with the One Minute Millionaire, it's, in, it's incorporating the One Minute Millionaire book into an actual system that's developed to help you go and walk through the various stages of becoming enlightened. Good. If anyone here wanted to do an infomercial, because we're going to teach them, they should have. You don't want to just write a book. You want to create what we're teaching as a system. Bob and I have acronymed the word save yourself time, energy, and money. And, and what a system has is an inside and an outside. And what this organization, Dynatech, and there are a couple other organizations represented here. It just happens to be we're with Dynatech, and we love them, and we love Melanie, and we love David Early and, and a whole team, because how many people work for Dynatech? Uh, 240 now. This is a serious business, and when you check out a speaker to speak for you, how many does, do you know how many Larry interviews before oh, we hire one? Hundreds. Yeah. The last time we hired a speaker, they interviewed 400, tested 400 speakers to find one mm -hmm. that was quality to sell what we want to sell on a weekend. Because when you're putting in 150 to $250,000 a week to fill seminars, that person has to go and get the return First, they've got to get to break even, which is called trading dollars. Then you go to profit. Does that make sense? What else can you tell about the infomercial business in the next 30 seconds? It's wonderful. <laughs> Why is it wonderful? There is so, there is so much uh, that can be offered through that, that world, if you will, of, of the infomercial business. So if, if you have a product and you're bringing that to market, what we do is bring a product that's already established in through a different venue. Uh, i.e. direct mail, DRTV, as I said, the direct response, um, infomercial seminar trainings. We do all of that, and it's, it's, quite, uh, it's quite dynamic. Melanie is here because she is a great student of Bob's and mine. I'm, just, I'm honored and flattered that there hasn't been a meeting that, that I've done in Orlando that she hasn't been to, whether it had to do with Dynatech or not. She has flown out here at her own expense, says maybe I ought to live here in California because she attends Bob's and my stuff. She lives the principles, does the principles, but she also loves all of our peers, which would you please give my friend Melanie Oiler a great standing ovation if you would please. Thanks, Mel. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. By the way, this guy walking by you've never met. Would you come back out here, walk by here one more time? This is Richard Greninger, who is the top videographer for myself. He does Tony Robbins. He does a lot of us in the business. He makes all the videos. Give Richard a round of applause. Thank you, Richard. Okay, if you'd put the uh, stuff back on the screen, please. I want to go through a couple quick books and why they work and what makes them work. Because some of you say, well, I don't know if I can do it. Everyone say, I can do it. Touch your neighbor's elbow, shake him, and say, you can do it. If you didn't have permission before you came here, I'm giving you permission. Everyone say, I got permission. Our friend Richard Paul Evans wrote the book called Christmas Box. He did it for his two kids. It turns out it, they started copying it. They copied 20,000 copies. It was self-published. When he went to New York to sell it, he kept half the rights, and he got a $4 million advance for the hardcover rights. It's the only book ever that is number one hardcover, number one paperback at the same time. You can do miracles if you think you do miracles. Richard has given me permission to tell a story. He's been at these seminars that we've done. We switch speakers every time. But Richard said he couldn't afford to pour the gas. And when he went home after he'd uh, sold the book, they had a $125,000 check, and he couldn't even afford to pour gas. Things were so bad. Who moved my cheese? Spencer Johnson, you'll never see his picture on a book. When I went to see him the first time, he owns a massive house in Hawaii. He's next door neighbors with my diving buddy, Wyland, and Oahu on the North Shore. And next door to him is, is my other buddy, Wally Famous Samus, who's one of my Horatio Algier peers, the guy who sells chocolate chip cookies. He's got this enormous gate at his house that goes up 20 feet. Bob Proctor and I went to see him. 
Um, he had his own pool designed because he hates, just like I don't like to have chlorine eyes when I'm swimming, he created molecules water that is uh, something else that he's patented. Because when you think, you can think. I go into where he studies and writes because he wrote all the value books and sold 14 million value books. He wrote the book uh, One Minute Manager with Ken Blanchard. The guy, I go into his office in Hawaii, and the first thing I see is this white rocker, and I said, it can't be. He said, it is. It was the Kennedy rocker, because I'm pretty scholarly in, in JFK, and he helped. He's a little older than I am, and he got JFK, uh, um, helped get him elected. Spence says he rewrites the book every time he gets systematic feedback that one line doesn't work. Now, you're talking about a book that is only about 60 or 80 pages. I don't know exactly. It's only got 30,000 words. He keeps rewriting it because the market has changed. The day I was with him, Bill Gates called and said, look, I gotta, I'll gotta, i pay you 50000 I'll pay you 100000 You've got to come to the meeting, and I'm going to dress up like uh, um, uh, Sniff, and Bomber's going to dress up like Scurry, and we don't know how you're going to dress up, but this is what you're going to do. And he says, I don't like to do talks anymore. He says, okay, then it's one hundred and fifty grand." He says, okay, I'll come. Spence taught me that what you got to do with your story is have instant behavioral change. You're going to see that in the next four or five slides because you got to get it. Everyone say, I got it. I have got it. Everyone hit your neighbor's knuckles with jive and say, you got it. How many of you read this book? Could I see your raise hands? How many of you got it that you're one of those four characters? Right. It is a little mythological story. It's got lots of white space. It's lots of freedom in that. Fish is in the same zone as everything that Spence and, and Blanchard do. And in the first month, sold 970,000 copies because it caused instant... What did it cause, everyone? <laughs> See, some of you say, well, I just write to fill a page. That won't work. The reason chicken soup works is it's little pithy stories. Little kid writes us a letter, to Mark and Jack, I'm 10 years old, I'm Rhino, and I've never bought a book. But every day my teacher reads one of your stories to us to calm us down. I saved my allowance for six months, and I went home, and Mommy and I live along. And Daddy ran away a long time ago, and I read her a story. And for the first time ever, she cried. I know we had a heart-to-heart, soul-to-soul talk. Do we need more of those or less of those? And that's what we say about Mother's Soul, which I showed you the cover of. Is I said, look, on Mother's Day, buy one of our mother's books when I do the media. One for mom, one for grandma, one for your in-law, one for your outlaw, one for everybody in the whole family. Read the story because most people don't know how to have family talking. What our books do is they unzip your heart, let your soul come out and play. The reason our teenage book, which our publisher said, that'll never sell. I got teenagers who buy CDs, cancer tickets, and clothes. The reason it works is that if you and I are 15 and we go to a movie and you come and say, wow, I say, give me an X of Jesus on Y, you can't do it. But if you read a story like Sparky or Puppies for Sale or I Wish I Had a Brother Like That, it gives you goosebumps and it forces you to talk. Psychiatrists that have kids going to the big house because they've murdered their parents or something can't ask them questions and get them to talk. And they won't read books generally, but they read our books. Because the story gets inside, and then they start to share their story. When I talked to Ball State University, three girls brought me there before I got to talk to 20,000 kids, and they had balls bouncing around the room. But they said, we never would have made it through as freshmen if we didn't have your book to bond us to the rest of the kids. That's when I decided to champion chicken soup for the college soul, because only one intendant matriculate, the president of Ball State, told me, graduate. And that doesn't work on a go-forward basis where... I'd just come back from Singapore, and 98% of the kids, 30 years ago, nobody went to college because they've got a dictator, but he's a benevolent dictator, Senior Minister Lee, who is second in command as an American Jewish guy who's a close friend of mine who will be on this platform with us in the future um, and does such a great job. But now 98% of the kids graduate college, and they all are multilingual. They speak English, Japanese, and Chinese, which Lee thinks is the languages of the future. When you ask somebody in Asia, you know, What's the only country in the world that uh, only speaks one language? They say America. You know, you can't get away with it anymore. You need to be multilingual. This guy and I are close friends. Wrote the, how many of you read the prayer of Jabez? Most of you, if you've read it, wake up in the morning like I do or go to bed at night repeating the mantra, which is just four lines. The first one is, Lord, bless me a lot. And you say, well, why is that? Well, he did this little anecdote in there that says when you get to the pearly gates or whatever it is in your spiritual system, you're going to have a gold door with your name on it. He said, let me in, let me in, St. Peter. And he said, I can't let you in. So why can't you let me in? I want to go. It's got my name on it. 
Say, because you can see all the blessings you could have had if you just A-S-K to G-E-T-M. When I woke up to that, I said, oh, the Lord bless me a lot. He's got a new book I'll call Life's Rewards, which is even better. And this guy's doing more good right now in Africa than ever. He is a colossal writer. I didn't even know he existed until he had that book out. And I would say that title wouldn't work, except, you know, it whacked out 11 million. Some of you say, well, how good do books, how well can you do the books? Well, J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry Potter, is now the second richest woman after the Queen Mum. Everyone go. And if you look at the top, Mary Higgins made $43.6 million. Tom Clancy, who is, for those of you men that are in technocrats, you know, the government's always asking, how do you know all this cool equipment we got? Made 47.8. Stephen King, 54.1. And that was after an accident. And you got Dean Koontz, who lives right here in the backdrop at $44 million. Not bad. Is writing a high-paid profession? The answer is, yeah. Is there room for you? The answer is, louder. Whoops, we went backwards. How did I do that? Am I going wrong? I'm going the right way this one. No, I'm not going the wrong way. I just thought you should see it twice. I thought, this is my newest toy. I really liked it. I got it. And uh, it's such a playful toy. Always think, everyone. Everyone, touch your neighbor's finger. Say, you can think mega starting now. Now, some of you are classic aficionados of mine, and you know that I teach you to wrap your goals in a $100 bill. I teach you that your little gold card looks like this. You need to sign it, get somebody else to sign it, and it should start out, I'm so happy. Everyone say, I'm so happy. The lady came up and said, come on, tell the truth. Don't you ever get depressed? I said, nope, never. And she said, oh, how depressing. <laughs> now, parentheses, one of the ways to sell books is get the people to understand they're buying the autograph and you're throwing in the book free. Everyone say, I got it. Here at LAX Airport, I met Red Skelton one time and I said, Mr. Skelton, I'm a great fan of yours. He said, it's a hot day. I need a fan. I said, is it true you got a photographic memory? He said, it's on develop. Somewhere during the conversation, he pulled out a wad of money, which was $25,000 in $100 bills. I'd never seen so much cash in somebody's pocket. I said, why do you have so much cash? He said, if you ever get mugged and you give them 25 grand, they're going to be very happy. <laughs> if you give them nothing, they'll kill you out of spite. Now, I sign in purple because that's the highest color in the electromagnetic spectrum. And I got boxes of these pins with me, in, with me in, in, in my office when it goes along with the colors of our book, which you've never seen a business book that is purple and gold before with a butterfly, which is the universal spiritual symbol of illumination that goes through eight major religions. Bob and I calculated all that at the front end because you're here to be comprehensively thoughtful and become, in Chicken Soup, we always have a chapter called Eclectic Wisdom. Everyone say, I'm eclectically wise. Everyone? <laughs> Anyhow, we signed, I signed in purple. He signed in red, and I appraised it the next day. It was worth $800. Now, back, end of parentheses. What did the people think? That my autograph will be worth $800 someday. I hope so. Okay, we're going to learn how to play this little toy. Here's what we're going to talk about tonight, my part, is that you're going to become an infopreneur because you're an information utility. All of you already have enough information. When we finish with Marshall Thurber as one of our last presenters, he's going to teach you that your mind thinks, as I said already, in images. Spiritual languages says, the Father within doeth the work. Better understood, the image within doeth the work. The picture within doeth the work. The idea, the concept within. And if you can get to the picture, which cause what I teach in marketing is the best marketing is storytelling. The best story always wins. All stories are metaphors. And most of us think in six metaphors a minute. Everyone go... So we're going to teach you that you've got lots of metaphors, and if you can't get them out, then what you want to do is buddy up with a ghost. Somebody here that wants to write but doesn't want to be famous. Not everybody wants to be famous, and you can either have them as a writer for hire, you can do a joint knowledge power, you can do a joint wisdom contract, you can do all kinds of agreements, which Francine will cover. I don't want to cover that part. Here's my teacher in graduate school. How many of you know who Dr. Buckminster Fuller was? He's passed away. When he ended his life, he was out here. And uh, he was with my friend Tom Crum in Washington. His wife, Ann uh, Hewlett Fuller, called and said, Bucky, I'm going to leave, and you always promised you'd be there on the other side for me. And uh, he said, Tommy, i got to leave. And he flew back here, and he died two minutes before her. What a, isn't that a nice romantic way to go at 89 years old? This guy is so cool. He had 2,000 major inventions. He finished Einstein's unified field theory. When, he thought he, when his kid died of spinal meningitis, 
during the height of the Depression, he'd already graduated. He'd been at the Harvard-Yale game. He was a Harvard guy who got kicked out a couple of times, once for chasing chorus girls and once for spending all his money. And I don't remember what the third one was. And he felt that he let his own kid down. And, and that's why he always saved flags the rest of his life. But what is critical today is that Fuller's position on economics was that R, whoops, RW is real wealth equals I plus E. I is ideas. And do all of you have lots of ideas, everyone? The answer is? Yeah. And energy can only be recycled, and tomorrow Jorge is going to teach you how to up your energy even more, right? Okay, so if, if you got unlimited energy, everyone say, I got unlimited energy. Shake your neighbor's hand, look them in their left eye, that gets them in the right brain, and say, I see you got unlimited energy. <laughs> Take your two fingers, point at me, and say, I see you got unlimited energy. Now, what you believe is what you achieve. So if you believe you've got unlimited energy, you got it. And if, if you come here, all you got to do is get one idea. Hold up one finger. How many ideas? Because what Bob and I are teaching, U times the system equals unlimited results. U times the system equals unlimited wealth. Bucky says, all you got to do is have that one idea goes. He built a Damaxian car that was the right car for the, our times now. It would run on alcohol, ethanol, and methanol. It, was, it had 11 passengers that faced each other. It ran on three wheels. It was front-wheel drive. You could park your own system. Henry Ford said, that's the best car ever designed, but I can't let it go to market. Why? Does he? Ford taught me there's four marketplaces you don't mess with because they'll crush you. The auto industry, the oil industry, the medical industry, and the pharmaceutical industry. So stay away from messing with those guys. Sell to them, but don't mess with them. Everyone say yes? Okay, so just, I'm going to, I promise, I've got it wired this time. It's my newest toy. I love toys. Here's one of my lines. Thought is the only currency, and when you really get this, you get rich. Everyone say, I got it. Now, what Random House does is they print 400 books a year. Now, they gave us a million dollars for the book. We'll do this story tomorrow. But who has to go deep? Everyone say, I do. Yeah, the publisher, like you just heard everyone say, is not going to go deep. How do you do it? It takes a level of expertise. All of you have more knowledge, more skill, more wisdom, more insight. All it takes is to back it up, like you've seen all the other presenters dance across here with passion and your hobby and your talent and your interest. It takes a story for success. Oh, Brent, where are you in the room? Come up here real quick. I promised I'd uh, let him share. I don't know where I put the handheld. Somebody know where I said it? Richard took it. Can I? Richard's bringing it back up here. He is moving fast. All that running you do every morning is showing up, Richard. It's good. I love this guy. He does a great job. Brent came up to me this evening and told me what has happened to him in the recent days. Would you mind sharing that ever so quickly with sure, your sure. passion and your story? I, um, like you, I came here for the first time in 1998. Uh, that seminar was on how to grow your speaking empire. The We're doing one of those in the fall that uh, I'll tell you in advance. Please go. Um, and it was interesting because uh, what I didn't tell you is the year prior to that, uh, I suffered a lot of tragedies. Uh, one of those was uh, my mother had died of lung cancer. Uh, she was 58, and she died in my arms. And that year was uh, horrible. And uh, I decided that year that I was going to do something. I was going to take care of myself on a full-time basis because I've been taking care of a lot of other people. And so I took care of myself by taking your uh, course. And I remember just everything that you shared, the passion, you know, first time I'd ever met you. And I knew I was a good speaker, and I knew something would come of it. Now, I was a casting director prior to that. I worked in this place called Hollywood. And prior to my mother's death, I had the fortunate luck of casting a film that the original title was called Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption. Um, I was really lucky. Uh, that film showed me that you know, dreams do come true and messages and whatever ideas you have can really transform the world. And that's what I wanted to do. And that's what you shared with me. So four years ago, who was a producer on that? Because some of them don't know. I know, but you know. But who was a well, there, producer, director, owner? The, well, Castle Rock is the one that did that. The story is that, um, and because you're asking me, I completely lost it. Is um, Tim Rob? Well, Tim Robbins was the uh, was the uh, played Andy Dufresne. Uh, but I'll, I'll share a story with you. I'll just, if I can do a Shawshank story. When we were casting that, Tim Robbins is not supposed to be in that film because. Uh, um, Stephen King, it's based on Stephen King's novel. And, um, you know, in order to green light a film, you have to have a star and you've got to have money. And, uh, and I can't believe I'm forgetting the director's name. Uh, 
Frank Darabont, thank you. Uh, Frank Darabont had never directed a picture in his life, but he had passion. And the rumor is, is that he had three separate meetings with Castle Rock, and Castle Rock said, no, I, you know, we want to direct it. And the rumor is that he gave away a lot of money to be able to direct this film. But he had the passion, he had the idea, he said, this is my baby. And so we were going to cast it. Um, Tim Robbins was not supposed to play the part of Andy Dufresne. We needed a star. So we got Tom Cruise. Uh, I know. <laughs> Six weeks prior to shooting, beginning shooting, Tom dropped out. And the next person on the list was Tim Robbins. Thank God. Uh, it's that kind of creative process. Now uh, tell me your story. So I go from Shawshank to my mother's death uh, and went to the pits. Went to the pits. And, um, you know, I, I, I want to do something to make a difference in the world. I saw the, the, the compassion that you had for the world, what you did. I read the books. And I'm a filmmaker, and I saw Shawshank, and I said, I want to create a film that does that. And so I took your class, and uh, I said, well, I'm going to do something. I want to find a niche. No one's ever developed a film and actually presented it as a speaker. I'm going to do that, hopefully. And I remember, you know, doing your goals, doing 100 goals and the outrageous things and all that. And I remember writing when I was sitting there. And I'm, I wrote the entire three days, my 100 goals. I remember when I got to the part, like number 49 was, I, by the age 40, I'm going to be, and my hand shook as I was writing Millionaire. <laughs> because I didn't really believe it, but I wrote it. And when I wrote it, I believed it. And so, okay, this is 1998. We'll, we'll see what happens. 1999, I decided to do a documentary uh, called Journey to a Hate-Free Millennium. I put together a production company called the New Light Media. I got the exclusive rights to look at the subject of hate as seen through the death of Matthew Shepard, uh, James Byrd Jr., and the students at Columbine High School. And for the last four years, I've been to every U.S. state. I've been to 18 foreign countries. Uh, I have been trying to really change the world with the passion that I have and to try to get rid of hate and to try to transform people into loving human beings, which is what I learned from you. I just had to find my niche. Uh, I've been to so many phenomenal places speaking at Ball State um, and various colleges and universities and high schools and conventions. In May, I leave to speak in front of the San Juan Puerto Rican government. Uh, last year, and I forgot to tell you, I said when I put the millionaire thing, uh, you know, at the time I think it was 36 or so, and I said, I'm going to do it by age 40. I gave myself like four years just in case. Um, <laughs> you know, on January 20th, this past year, I turned 40, and I needed to hire an accountant. <laughs> Any final word you want to give them? How did they get so passionate as you The final word is this, is that... Um, What's interesting is that in 96, 97, I lost my mother to cancer. Yes, I want to be a millionaire, but I wanted to be able to create money and bring abundance to my life that, um, that came from what it is that I was most passionate about. You know, I believed in myself. Um, you know, I believe that you have to give back to the world because it truly comes back to you 10, 20, 30, 100 fold. The greatest moment of my life was last year when my former college in Erie, Pennsylvania called me out of the blue and said, we're giving you the community service award for your work. And there's a lot of people who went to my college. What they didn't know is that not only did I accept the award, but I donated a $25,000 scholarship in my mother's name. That made me feel really good. Find that which you are most passionate about. It's here. It is here. My mother used to say, but always start with your heart and then take the elevator to your mind. And uh, that's what I do. And now, after four years, and, having, uh, and I did. I had no idea I was going to be up here. I just went to him because one of the other goals was... Uh, back in 98 was that when I become successful, whatever that is, when the abundance comes, I'm going to meet you and I'm going to shake your hand. So I thank you very much. Give him a round of applause. Thank you, Dean. Sorry, that was not a good idea. Sorry. Good. All right. Bob Allen says, ultimately, the product you sell is love manifested and materialized. Some of you know that Bob, uh, two Saturdays ago, uh, was driving home after working way too hard and being a little sleep deprived, had an accident. He will not be with us tomorrow morning. He uh, sends you all his love. He is healing. He is, has had only miracles, which I will write with him, the 12 miracles of, 
of uh, the breakthroughs that he's had. I mean, he got to the right hospital. He had the right. He had somebody see him um, have his accident and come back and say, "We got to have police come out here." And the, the jaws of life got him out, and they got him to Scripps, which is one of the three finest trauma centers, and they um, have put him back together in a manifested way. You will hear a lot about him tomorrow. As some of you know, he wrote nothing down. He started. As a uh, graduate with a Master's in Business Administration over in Salt Lake, he was the best student of Dr. Steve Covey. Um, he just had breakthrough after breakthrough, but nobody would hire him. He tried to get a job with General Motors, General Electric, and they generally didn't want him. And uh, so he found this guy that was selling real estate, earning, earned his fortune with real estate that went to his church, asked the guy to teach him how to do it. Bob, first units was, uh, he bought a 12-unit uh, building that he made a lot of money on, started buying stuff, said, and he bought all of it with nothing down. So he took out a little ad when he was living in Salt Lake, had just graduated, and said, uh, come to a seminar, and I'll teach you how to buy real estate with nothing down. Well, I'll charge you $100. Tw- ad cost $25. He had 100 people show up at $100 each. That's $10,000 uh, for a $25 ad. Is that a good return on investment? That became a quarter uh, billion dollar product called Nothing Down and Nothing Down Seminars. And he did creating wealth. First one was send me to any city, take away my wallet, take away all my credit, and I will buy some fine real estate. L.A. Times took him up to San Francisco, took away his wallet and his credit, and within about 57 hours he turned it into $750,000. It became front page. It syndicated. It rocked that book to the top. Then Regis said, well, can you do it with anyone? So he took him to an unemployment line, said, send me an on the unemployment line, and then um, I'll take somebody, and in a month I'll have them earning five grand a month and never to step foot in the unemployment line. Bob's last name is Allen, so it is challenge, right? And now he and I are challenging. I'm going to go all the way to the last one, the One Minute Millionaire. We're going to create a million millionaires this decade that have a million dollars to give away, a million times a million is a trillion Nobody's ever had a bodacious goal like that, so that's what we're going to do, and you'll hear more about them. What are the essential skills of a successful infopreneur? First of all, they've got to find positive addicts, like chicken soup for the golfer's soul. Why does it rock so well? Because everyone knows that you've got to give a golfer something for holidays. Most golfers are fairly affluent, so we've done golfers one, golfers two. Hungry fish. On Mother's Day, you know, if you... Jim Rowan says it so well. It's nice to give flowers, but it's more important to give the right words with the right flowers. And all of us struggle with words, especially in this business. Number two, tap into a universal want or need. And we'll teach you how to do that increasingly throughout this weekend. And what you want is not a percentage of market, but you want a percentage of customer. How many of you have bought a Chicken Soup for the Soul book? Can I see your raise hands? How many of you plan on buying another during the rest of your life? Look around the room. Because the average person that buys my books that are they're hooked on them buys four or five as gifts a year. And we've now got 64 out. We've got 74 more coming. We, our rocking book right now is Chicken Soup of the Grieving Soul. Why? 377,000 people die every day in America. It just It's a large number. And, you know, there's nobody that's uh, tried to take care of that kind of marketplace. The beauty of our business is it's a business that makes a difference in every way. And I hope it's easy to research. Because you can get the information off the Internet. You can get it by interviewing. And when we finished Chicken Soup, and, and I, Jack and I were both about $140,000 upside down. I've worked at, we've got a lot of great chiropractors in the room who have been my friends for the last 25 years. How many DCs have we got in here? Doctors of cause. Stand up, please, docs. Give them a round of applause, if you would, please. Look around the room. We've got, looks like a dozen here. And I thank you for being here. But I did a set of tapes where I interviewed all the superstars in chiropractic, the ones that were, had a million-dollar practice. I did a set of tapes, How to Build a Million-Dollar Practice. We sold $3 million worth that year because I was out of money. I needed money. And I said, well, I'll do information products. Can you do information products? The answer is, yeah, there's great stuff. Easy to research. Easy to create. People will buy interviews. They can do buy interview books. Easy to create. Everyone say, this is fun and easy. Everyone touch yourself and say, please, this is cheap to test. You just say, will you give me however much you're going to sell it for, whether it's $1, $10, $20, $50, $100, whatever you're going to sell the stuff for. Cheap to produce, inventory and correct, especially now that everything is digitized. Low cost startup, high perceived value, high markup, high perceived value. Bill Gates has shown us he's an infopreneur in case you didn't have it. And we heard Brent say, I want all of you to write down 101 goals. I've got over 6,000, and I've hit, now hit 1,687 of them. But one of them was, I thought, well, Bill Gates, did Bill Gates invent MS-DOS? What did he do? 
bought it. Some people say he stole it, but he paid for it. You know, so I wrote, I'm going to have an MS DOS. Well, Bob and I, right before his accident, were presented with an MS DOS for us. Why? Because I had it in my written goals. You got to figure out what you want. Number two, you put it in writing. The minute you put it in writing, it starts to mass attract itself to you. But some of you have never had the, gall- to use New Yorker terminology, galloping chutzpah to write down stuff. Do we want to have a high markup or a low markup? Which way? I mean, once you print something, it costs virtually nothing, so it's a great uh, deal. Income while you sleep. Residual income, Bob and I define as income while I... Everyone say, we'll do it in the first person. Say, income while I sleep, everyone. Unlimited worldwide markup. We have our... our um, Asian distributors in the room, and I'll introduce them to you tomorrow morning rather than tonight because I've already run over time a little bit. Mobility operate from any mailbox in the world. I mean, yesterday on Catalina, the first thing they did when we took the tour, because I'd never taken a tour of Catalina before, they take you by Zane Gray's house. And I mean, next to the Wrigley Mansion, it's the biggest house on Catalina. I mean, it just goes on forever, and it's become a hotel now. I think that writing works. Copyright protection from competitors. Now, that works in America. It does not work very well in Thailand. It doesn't work in mainland China yet. Will it work in mainland China? Go like that. All of that is going to change in the next couple of years because Bill Gates is going to get it to change. When Jack found out they were black marketing our books throughout Asia, he said, I want to write the president and get him to do something. I said, he's a little busy with Monica. I don't think he cares right now. <laughs> Prestigious, impressive career. <laughs> Everyone touch yourself say, I'm an author. Satisfying, permanent record for future generations. This is what you want to do. Because ideas, when you start putting them down, you really figure out what you believe. Where will you make your next million? Well, we've got people that have been up here tonight in health and fitness, financial success and money, love and relationships, spirituality and enlightenment. And enlightenment is going to be the big word for the rest of this decade. I think we're out of the business of dark and millionaires. Self-esteem, you heard Francine talk to a personal development success. I mean, let me just go back one. Brian Tracy is not with us because he's in Russia. Brian, as you know, has made 300 albums for Nightingale, Conant, and Dartnell. He is the most prolific um, creative machine, and we've been friends for pretty close to 30 years. I met him the first time up in Canada when he was still up in Alberta, and we see each other a lot because we work together a lot and play together and on the same list most of the time. And we've been at each other's homes on numerous occasions. But Brian had no better sense than to write a 700-page report on how to bring market capitalism to Russia. Brought it to George Bush. Bush and Putin and he got together, and he is right now in Russia turning it around because Gorbachev meant well by doing glas nas, which means politics and then market. But it doesn't work. The Chinese are doing market, then politics. So Russia is now going to do market Then politics. You say, well, what does that mean to me? What it means is that with this seminar and with the one that we do this fall called Mega Speaking University, I'm going to create 6,000 major speakers. Brian Tracy said, look, tell everybody that not far from now, Russia wants to bring every one of you there. They want to have self-help throughout all of Russia. They want to turn around the country because communism doesn't work. Socialism doesn't work. While there's a lot of inequity and a lot of problems in capitalism, it is still the best and the most generous and the most complete system. And I teach the more enterprising you are, the freer you are. And so you're going to hear that I'm a bleeding heart capitalist. But it is exciting to me that we're turning the world around in Russia. We're turning the world around in China. And, And who gets to do that? Everyone say, I do. Sexual fulfillment seems like a good idea. Beauty, desirability, personal attractiveness. It's a dangerous place to go, but I, you know, entertainment humor, you just just heard that. Cabot Roberts says you don't have to be funny unless you want to get paid. (laughs) What? Where's procrastination? That's it. Has she got a niche? Give her one more round of applause. Hey, Rita. Here's what Bob and I are teaching. One great idea. Everyone say, I've got a great idea. Everyone, I? One key contact. Is that key contact in the room? The answer is? <laughs> equals your fortune. Now, I teach the best thing you can do the, for the poor is not be one of them. My next door neighbor south here at Newport Beach has the largest plumbing concern. On the side of his trucks, it says, a flush beats a full house. <laughs> Here's some products I've put together for you I'd love you to leave with. I'll show you mine. I show you this not only because I want you to take them home and you've heard about them, but because I want you to see yourself in this image. Everyone say, I got it. 
When Bob and I wanted to pre-sell a million copies of One Minute Millionaire, we invited the 40 best marketing minds together. No one's ever tried to do that before. We had everybody there, and it's, we did a set of, we videotaped it, we CD'd it. Um, it. We got every piece of information of what the finest marketing minds. We had Brian Tracy there say, you'll see it tomorrow, but, you know, use Occam's Razor. And I said, oh, what a great idea. What's Occam's Razor? You know, it means you do it the easiest, fastest, best way. And I said, and what's that? He said, find one guy to buy a million rather than a million people buy one each. And I said, good idea. Oh, we had another guy there, the guy who's the top insurance salesman in the world, my good friend and a client for 30 years, Jimmy Griffin. And he said, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time at the Harvard Club with a guy who runs a little company called Citibank, and he could buy a million books. So it went from a dream, right? You go from fantasy to theory to reality. It's amazing what you can do. The guy who runs the fast-growing real estate company in America right now is Gary Keller of Keller Williams. He listened to this, and he had all 200 of his managers buy a set of these and listen to it. He says it's the best lead-generating device I've ever seen. And if you don't know how to generate leads, you can't go from suspect to prospect to customer to client to lifelong client and friend. And uh, their company in one year because of these tapes went from 13,000 agents to 27,000 agents. You, know, you don't have to have the stuff, but it, it's interesting what you can do with products once you got it, and then you sell it with testimonials. You've heard a half dozen people tell you that the um, CDs, which are called Mega Book Marketing University, have different speakers last year, for the most part, than we have this year. And, for example, we had the top licensing lady, the li lady that licensed all of our stuff, licensed all a little guy named Steven Spielberg, another guy named George Lucas, another guy named Ted Turner, another company called MGM. And she was here to teach you how to license. Because if you could do something once, remember, residual income is do it once but get paid multiple times. If you do it once and get paid once, you've got a job, which means you're just over broke. And we want you to have a real MBA, a massive bank account. We want you to fall off your wallet. I've been selling since I was nine years old. Some of you know my story pretty well. So sell yourself rich, which I believe is the easiest, the best way to get rich. And do I want all of you to sell more books than I've sold? The answer is this teaches you all the eight ways to find the prospects, 12 ways to network, 38 ways to close. Now, because I've been complimenting my friend Brian Tracy, he teaches 24 ways to close. My colleague Zig Ziglar teaches 24 ways to close. For the same money, I teach you 38. Whose do you want? Whoops, there goes those CDs. Um, <laughs> well, that just popped open. I see. Anyhow, we had a kid down in San Diego, 21 years old, just get the first tape and make a half million dollars in his first year. So this is pretty cool stuff. Then we did a set of tapes called How to Think Bigger Than You Ever Thought You Could Think. It teaches you how to take nothing, turn it into something great. The story I like and hear so much that I did is um, if you've never been down to Tuskegee, Alabama, George Washington Carver, was pulled on there by Booker T. Washington said, you got to help our people, and he sees nothing but dried dirt, 2,000 acres, a little wooden claptrap building, and all the cotton was being eaten by the bull weevil because they exploited the soil too much. He did his little prayer at 4 o'clock in the morning and said, grow legumes, started growing soybeans and peanuts, got all the black farmers to do it. They came back and said, Dr. Carver, you put it to us. There's no market for peanuts. He said, look, there's an economic law called Say's Law. This is where most of you are. That's why I teach it here is it says law says supply creates demand. Everyone say it, please. So he goes back into deep, profound meditation at 4 o'clock in the morning, which is when you don't get interrupted. He said, okay, God, what's the answer? And he came up with 362 inventions for the peanut in one month, like peanut oil and peanut milk. He says you can live on a peanut, and the one we eat all the time is called peanut. All because you think bigger. Is it a good idea to exploit your good thinking? It is the only title I've ever done like Dr. Zeus. How to think bigger than you ever thought you could think, which I sort of like. We did a uh, set of tapes. You also get the book you've seen. Which some of you haven't seen this yet because a lot of you are from foreign countries. But the One Minute Millionaire, we've sold almost all the rights around the world. In the Middle East right now, they're just arguing for our rights, but they want to bring... There's 150 million people in the Middle East, starting in Dubai, which the Minister of Education wants us to come there as soon as the war is over. And um, he wants only self-help books. So some of you are in the same category I am, which is self-help action books. This is that kind of book. When Bob inspired me to write it with him, because <clears throat> he was going to write it alone, um, it is the only book that's two books in one. On the left-hand side, it's the Millionaire Ahas. On the right-hand side, it's the story of a little lady who loses everything and has to win it back, and we have a little butterfly at the bottom that goes right off the top. 
And uh, so we're going to sell so many books, we're going to be number one on two lists at once. Is that good or is that good? That is, remember you heard Jorge say, got to do something different. Then we got two other sets of tapes here that come in this whole package. One is called Dreams Don't Have Deadlines, and, and uh, you're never too la- late. it's never too late to fulfill your whole life. And then Jack and I did a, a one time, this was the number one selling set of tapes where we interviewed the 101 best askers in America, starting with Mother Teresa, the Aladdin factor, how to get everything you want. And... It says normal people pay 1100 but you get it for equivalently $2 per working day, and it'll double your income. Would that be good or would that be good? Yeah. I share with you that not only do you want to take my stuff, and tomorrow morning you'll hear John Childers is one of the first people, and then Dan Pointer, and then we'll go through the whole day. But everybody's going to have something here to share. Pick the stuff that resonates with you. Take it home. Listen to it 17 to 21 times. Make it your own, and then go out and multiply it. Here's what's going to happen. Can't handle sudden wealth. Help yourself. <laughs> Here's a story I finished with, and I'm going to bring back up Deborah Jones. Uh, I got to meet Sly because I love the movie Rocky. How many of you saw the movie Rocky? Could I see you raise hand? Well, here's the story in case you didn't know it. 1974, Sly is a broke down B actor and a wannabe writer inspired by a nobody boxer who fights Muhammad Ali. He said, that's it. I'll write the story of a fighter against the world. He writes it in three days. Hold up three fingers. How many days? How many days? Shout it. Louder. How many days? See, a lot of you have been sitting on your hands saying, well, it takes a long time to write something great. How fast did he write it? How many days? Down to his last 106 bucks, submits it to his agent. They always say 20 grand, but we want Bert or we want Ryan O'Neill. Would they have been right for the part? Rejects it. Offers to play the lead for free. They say, look, we'll give you 80 grand if you don't play the lead. (laughs) He refuses. Did he know what he wanted? Remember what Deborah said. Whatever you want, wants. Yeah, don't compromise. Offered 200 grand if Robert Redford is in a lead. Yeah, when, by the way, when Sly wrote it, who did Sly see in the lead? See, when you're doing your visualization tonight before you go to sleep and you see yourself at the best selling house, see yourself at the top of the New York Times bestseller list. Literally on Sunday when we're here, go out of your way to buy a New York Times, cut out the New York Times, paste out where we're number one and put yourself there or whatever list you want. There are five lists. You can make it to one of them. And there's fiction, nonfiction, hard bond, soft bond, oversized trade. Over 300K, I don't want to live my life. What if? Everyone say, what if? Over 330, he said, rather never see it made if I'm not in it. They finally agree. Net 6,000 instead of 330, but follow your gut, stick to your guns. Stallone is nominated Best Actor, wins three Academy Awards. Stallone stars in 31 movies. Rocky Star makes a billion dollars. Is that good or is that good? That is... Welcome, Deborah, back. If you would, please, everyone give a great round of applause to my dear friend, Deborah Jones. Thank you, Deborah. I need, oh, there it is. And he's working his way over there for his Mark, one more time, let us acknowledge you. Let's give Mark one more big round of applause. Thank you, Mark. That was incredible. Thank you. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pumped up. I've already taken four full pages of notes. So let me ask you something. How many of you have gotten at least one idea so far? Can I see your hand? Okay, Mark, we can all go home. They've all got their ideas now. Well, the great news is is that this is just the beginning. The ideas are going to continue to flow and flow and flow. Mark, you were awesome tonight. I've heard Mark speak many, many times over the past 20 years, and I have an opportunity in my line of work on a regular basis to deal with people that are running billion-dollar-plus multi-international companies, and I have never, and I mean never, in my 20 years of being in business met anyone that has more marketing genius wrapped up between their two ears than Mark Victor Hansen. One more round of applause. You're phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Okay, have you enjoyed your opening session this evening? Yes, good, I'm glad. Let me ask you as we close out this evening, if you've had any fun yet, let me hear you say yes. Yes. I want you to get a good night's sleep. I want you to mix and mingle. I want you to think about the dreams you want to bring into reality, and I want to see your bright, sunshining faces in here this morning and everybody in a different chair. Good night. Good night.